Hello, X. Hello, DJT. There's so many enemies in this cave. <clears throat> Good morning, a Burbalarian. Good morning, Jesse Ward. Boop, 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 boop. Hmm. Good morning, Rex. Good morning, Blade Javal. Do I have any questions in the queue? It's kind of a chill game in general. For anybody who's currently on... I do, actually, from DJT. He says, have you ever played Resident Evil 7 or 8? No. If so, I guess I could stop there, but do you like the story direction of them or prefer the B-movie tone of the early ones? I can actually answer that because I prefer the B-movie tone in general. I've never been into Resident Evil trying to be serious, personally. Because it's tried a few times, and I don't think it's ever succeeded personally, but even ignoring that, I tend to prefer the camp nature of Resident Evil just as a preference thing. Yes, be rescued. Yeah, that's, that's exactly Robo's Tall. That's exactly my thought on that. Uh... Oh, the Sword Runner. Uh, it's actually an original composition, A. Williams, so uh, I suppose that's the answer to your question. It's something I came up with for the rumination specifically. Yeah, I think Bulba Runner works a little bit better. Be free! Good morning, Roxy. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Danka. And good morning, Robostal. Okay, that's all of them. As I say, Saurian's more the Sour Runner. Laura Saur. Yep, I brought in Shellos for a rest. Thank you, A. Williams. Mm. We're now bronze rank. Yes. Hey, we can have more items in storage. Thanks for the gravel rock. Can I throw it away immediately? Hey! Hey, D. Taylor Smith. I hope you're enjoying. I said it just came out, didn't it? Aw. I'm sorry, Roxy. Hey, sweet. 1500. Aw. Good day, Lieutenant Leroy. Make sure you eat your berries nice and good. Chapter 5. The First Official Exploration. Yeah, that's my favorite part, Alex. They don't even say what the Shellos was guilty of. Just, yep, he's guilty. Yes.
how the how I feel about the inventory is going to depend, but for an exploration game, it makes sense to have limited regular inventory. I don't think it has makes sense to have limited storage, though, so that's kind of debatable. I need to store a lot of this, speaking of which. So let's see, um, who else has asked me? Jesse Ward is not Jesse's mask. Uh, ah, DJTS, another question. What's your favorite Pokemon type? Ghost or Steel? One of the two. I'm not actually sure which, but I'd, 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 I'd probably pick between one of those two types. Thank you, Seraphim. As always. Oh, hi, Jesse's Mask. Sorry, Jesse's Ward was here earlier. And then just I, I went to see the QA queue, and I noticed there was a question from Jesse's Mask. And the two of you are secretly the same person, as we've talked about many times. I mean, my favorite type is a flying poison, so with El Duino. Speaking of which, my third favorite type is poison. Uh, game? There we go. Everyone listen up. I have an important announcement to make. Far to the northeast, and then farther into its outermost reaches, there lies a place called Tree Shroud Forest. In the Tree Shroud Forest, time has apparently stopped. How would you even know? You're saying time stopped. Hey, hey, hey! Yes, that's correct. Time has come to a standstill in Tree Shroud Forest. The wind has stopped. The clouds are motionless. Ah, yes, and happy May 4th, everyone. Sorry I'm not streaming any Star Wars today. I don't think any Star Wars stuff is even on the queue right now. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, if I was going to be a gym leader, I'd probably go with Ghost, if I had to pick one. I do enjoy the gym leader challenge, so that probably says whatever about my mentality. Dewdrops on leaves won't fall, they just hang there, suspended. In Tree Shroud Forest, time itself is truly shot. How would you know? If time stopped, if you went into the time stop zone, you would be stopped, and no one could leave it. I guess you could see it, but like... How is time stopped locally? And if it is, why hasn't that chunk of the planet flown off at the... Okay, whatever. You know what? Let's let this go. Letting it go. How could something this awful happen? It's unthinkable. Yes, the unthinkable has happened. Why is time stopped in Tree Shroud Forest? Well, it's because Tree Shroud Forest's time gear was stolen. By Groivel, or however you say that guy's name. The time gear was stolen? That's what made time stop? I heard it was possible. But now it's really happened. I don't get it. Why would anyone take a time gear? Quiet, everyone. Officer Magnazone has already started an investigation. It's hard to believe anyone would dare steal a time gear. But if one time gear can be stolen, the others may also be in danger. The officer, lol, Roxy. The officer asked to be notified immediately if we notice any suspicious characters. Keep that in mind. Let us know if you've noticed anything. That is all. You two, come here. I mean, fair, Alex. You've pick. I mean, they even knew what a human was, which is just. You've become quite good at your work. I'm impressed with your capture of Drowsy. That was very admirable. Honestly, Shellos was harder than Drowsy. You will finally be assigned a mission of a proper exploration team. Really? Hooray! Let me see your wonder map. Treasure Town is here. Over here is where we'd like you to investigate. See this waterfall? By all appearances, it's just an ordinary waterfall. But this is no ordinary waterfall! And that's where you come in. We want you to investigate the waterfall and determine what's there. That's all. I understand. You know, I've actually always hated that argument, eh, Williams? No offense. Just, I've always hated that argument. Like, it's, it's not that hard to require a setting that has self-consistent rules that co coincide with reality. 
to adhere to its own self-consistent rules that co coincide with reality. It, it's just go with it is what this is. That's actually the exact terminology for this type of writing. And it's called that because just go with it. Doesn't make it any better. It's just what it is. Most settings do this to some extent or another. This will be the first time we do a real job as a team. Getting a little worked out. Don't worry, Loke. We got this. Maybe. So, Jesse's Mask asked, what game reviewed before the Oblivion cutoff would you most want to re-review? That's actually a good question. Um, first, let me get this crud out of my eye. Come on. Ah. Uh, yes, I am using a PC PS3 controller. You know, honestly, I don't remember all the software I use. Because I think it's like three different programs. I know I'm using whatever that is, which it doesn't even tell me. And, uh, re -wazed. And I think I'm using something else. Let's see if I can figure out what this is called. I had, I got, it took, it was an absolute pain to get the PS3 controller set up. But it's been set up ever since, and I haven't touched it since, so... And that was years ago. Uh, is this it? No, that's RetroArch. I don't remember. Hang on. PS3 controller on PC. SCP Toolkit. That's what I use. SCP Toolkit. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Dakota. Look, 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 wrong way. Oh, let's see if he's... Hey, Diglett, it's a new day. Buckle down and focus. You two train hard every day. Hi, Oxymoron. Runner and Loke, too. Huh? What's Chim Chim Chimacho doing over here? Hello. What's going on here? I just started an assembly here. Uh, today, in fact. Assembly? Yes, for assembling your team. Have you ever considered adding members? Other oh, members? Well, sure, it'd be cool to add other members. If it's more than just two of us, we can help. Well, then, you need to start recruiting new members. How? ring the friendship bell. Now we have the power to recruit new members. Wow, that was easy. From now on, while battling Pokemon in dungeons, you may earn the respect of some of them. And those Pokemon will ask to join Team Horizon. When you've recruited a Pokemon, you can bring it along with you. <laughs> cool. Double boss fights. Why not? Leader's always nervous around fire. But that's a small thing compared to all the positives. I'm so happy to support our leader, thick and thin. Yeah, your leader's a plant type, so that makes sense. For Team Flame, I'm the leader, a bell sprout. I don't like to admit it, but I'm very timid. If my team ever start fighting with fire, I can't do a thing but stand back and hope I don't get hit. I feel so pathetic. Just don't become the bell sprout of shadows, we'll be good. Ponytia and I. We're great at using fire-based attacks, as you could imagine. But we can't leave swirling fire in our wake as we fight. And that scares our leader. I think our leader's lost confidence because of this, but I don't know what we can do about it. Okay, here we go. I have a list of games from before the Oblivion line, so which of these do I most want to re-review? So I noticed that one of the first games on the list is Super Mario Odyssey. I'm probably just going to stop right there and say my answer to your question. Uh... That was Jesse's mask. Is Super Mario Odyssey because Super Mario Odyssey is Super Mario Odyssey. But continuing down the list a little bit, there's a couple other games I'd love to recover. 
Uh, Yakuza 0 would be fun to go back through. Celeste. Uh, God of War 4. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Subnautica, which we actually are doing in a, probably about a few weeks here. Uh, Dragon Quest 11. Kingdom Hearts 3, which we will be redoing. Devil May Cry 5, which we will be redoing. Sekiro, the only other one I'm actually looking forward to. Wrong Bloodstained, Alex. Sorry. Hitman 2 would be fun, although we're actually redoing that as a part of Hitman 3. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a long but amazing game. Super Metroid is duh. That's actually part of the, the Metroid block. Twilight Princess. The Final Fantasies. GTA 5. Luigi's Mansion 3. Dragon Age Origins. Shantae. And Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. There you go, boom. All of those games I'm looking forward to re-reviewing. Ugh. I... I mean, no. I would rather not, Valerian, if that's okay. No, that's me, Crazy Norse. Subnautica was freaking me the hell out when I was playing it. Exploring is too much effort. Mood. We're Team Slacker. We're the Zero Motivation Exploration Team. It's interesting you say that, Alex, because I've really loved 100%ing Mario Odyssey. And I have 100%ed Mario Odyssey. Most of it on camera, even. There are stairs here. And a, and a sign. Spinda's Cafe, a, ho a shop of hopes and dreams, opening soon. Win big. Apparently it's not open yet, but once it's open, by golly. Oh no, it's it don't mistake me, Subnautica's really good. It's just wow. That game is terrifying. You know Marowak Marowak Dojo? It's a place where exploration teams can go hone their skills. When everything was peaceful, there wasn't much need for his services. Sensei couldn't pay for its upkeep, and eventually it collapsed. What? But, let there be rejoicing. The Marowak Dojo has been resurrected from the rubble. Back and better than ever under new management. And I'm going around advertising its reopening for my sponsor, Marowak. Cool. Well, we now have access to the grind point, from what I read. I feel like finding new places where no one's gone before. We're Team Razor Wind. We're the Sharp Clawed Trio. We slash our way through deep woods with our sharp claws. We try to buy only cheaper items that have the greatest value. So which items should we buy today? The shop down here looks unoccupied now. Not in business yet. I guess. Yeah, I've only 100%ed Sunshine once, and I will never do so again. If I have to explain why, well...
I have not, Gum Gum. Although I know it exists. Oh, absolutely, Leander. Gungan had a question earlier, too, which, wow, it reformatted everything. What the hell? Um... There it is. If Nintendo's games is what keep them alive, why did the Wii U flop? But actually, there's like three questions. There's three answers to that. The most obvious one is the Wii U didn't sell well. And you're probably thinking, well, why does that matter if their games keep them afloat? They were only making games for the Wii U and the 3DS. So... The end, essentially. Hmm. Yeah, the Wii U had several issues, yes. Bad marketing in addition to uh, going up against some bad competition, in addition to essentially being one step in the door of some really good ideas. No, I mean that specifically. I really do. If you think about it, the Switch really is just the Wii U 2. They took the same general architecture and concepts of the Wii U and just took it to the next level, and here we are with the Switch. Go figure. I've never heard of Citizen Sleeper. What is Citizen Sleeper? Either way, thank you very much, Jesse's Mask. I do always appreciate. Yeah, I remember when the 3DS came out and it had exactly one game on it that I cared about. It is a sleeper. Hang on, hang on. Which one was this? It's apparently coming out tomorrow. I do not agree with that at all, Alex. Sorry. I'm just gonna be like, nope. Yeah, this is the tactical turn-based RPG. I remember this one. Yeah, sure, we'll add this. Uh, which Jesse was that? That was Mask. Wait, this isn't the dice one? Or, I'm sorry, this isn't the, the tactical one? Hmm. Well, whatever it is, I believe you. This is not giving me a lot of info, so I'm just going to trust you on this one. Have I seen Avatar? Unfortunately, yes, I have. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I've seen both Avatars. Ironically, I don't like either of them. My first visitors. Welcome to Marowak Dojo. This is my place. It's dedicated to the training of teams. The dojo went from rack to ruin, then to a pile of rubble. But it's now risen from the dust to its former glory. But I haven't had any visitors. There hasn't even been one. It saddened me to my very narrow... I mean, it's... I... If you like the movie, then I'm happy for you, Ellie's heart. Really. But, to me, the movie was a cheap, badly scripted, badly acted, badly constructed... way to try and show off CGI, you know? It's an urban legend, Crazy Norse. I did like the main military villain. He was amusing. 
Um, also, the film reminded me entirely too much of uh, Last Fern Gully or whatever. I know, I know, it's a common archetype. It's just, really? Yeah, it was a very... You know what? The main reason that the Avatar film pisses me off, more than it should, is because it... It, it was so universally praised when it came out, and it made so much money, and it absolutely does not deserve it. It is an acceptable Hollywood action flick. Like, it's not actually that bad of a film in its own right. The fact that it did so well professionally insults me. I don't even want money. Keep it, just train here, that's all I ask. Okay. There's the entrance to the training mazes. I have to tell you one thing. Training mazes aren't like ordinary dungeons. There's this icky part. When you go in, you hand over everything in your treasure bag. Oh, no. To avoid losing items in your treasure bag, put them in Kangaskhan's storage before you go in. If you get KO'd, you don't lose the new money and items you found. There's no risk. But you have to go in empty. Sweet. Very true, Takoida. Do you know one of the best-selling films of all time is one of the recent Jurassic World films? Anyways. <clears throat> I have no idea, Eliezer. I've never really reviewed the Kingdom Hearts series. Yeah, I liked Jurassic Park the movie quite a bit. Jurassic Park 2 is... I'm gonna stab you at. <laughs> um, yeah, no kidding, Crazy Norse. Uh, Jurassic Park 1, in my opinion, is a legitimately excellent film. Jurassic Park 2 is okay. I don't care for Jurassic Park 3. I actively started to be, raise my eyebrow at Jurassic Park 4, but at least had some good moments. Jurassic Park 5 can go to hell. Alan! Alan! No, that... Which one was six? I mean, I haven't seen it either way, but... I have absolutely no reason to keep watching the Jurassic Park series at this point. At least Fast and the Furious tends to be ridiculous fun. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, Strange 2's coming out soon. Anybody gonna go see that? I will not be. I mean, I'll probably see it someday. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, I'm actually doing something specific. And I can't remember what I'm doing. Ah, right. Okay. I have not seen Venom or Venom 2. I haven't seen... I, I know all the story stuff from the recent things, but I haven't really seen any of it. I don't really have any particular plans to anytime soon. I know it exists. That's about all I got. It doesn't help that my movie-going group kind of fell apart. Yeah, everything I've heard from the people who I actually trust their opinions on has agreed that the reason that Venom 1 and Venom 2 are enjoyable is because of Tom Hardy. Like, and, and that's it. If you like Tom Hardy, you're good to go. 
anything. Right, what can you learn, Logue? Hey, something. An actual... Yep, an actual attack. Holy crap, yes. Yeah, our first electric move at level 13. I am not a shiny. Is, are shinies even in this game? Yeah, I haven't even seen uh, the recent Spider-Man film, and by recent I mean it came out months ago at this point. Already on. Cool. How do I leave these dungeons? Do I just die? Is that is that how I get out of here? Oh god, that would be awful. Okay, you have to recruit enemies. It's a very low chance to recruit them. And also, they might be shiny, which is a really... You know how I feel about RNG on top of RNG. I don't know how many floors this is. Yeah, there's rights issues. They're called Sony. Can't recruit in mazes. Sadness. I mean, it was one of his earliest things ever. Nemesis, I mean. question. If Marowak is just hiring these people to fight us, I mean, that makes sense. It's a training dojo, right? So yeah, they've leveled a bit. Oh, geez. Where's, where's Loke going? That's an interesting question. How much flack does Tom Hardy deserve for Shinzon and Nemesis? Because it is at least a little bit of the flack. It's okay. No detriment. I was going to say, we saw plenty of actors who we knew were good actors in roles they knew well, not doing well, so... They're fine, Alex. They know what they were doing. It's cool. Everything's cool. This is probably the best song I've heard so far, Act. Oops, wrong direction. You're cool. It's fine. It's fine. Ambipom? Well, it's creepy looking, first of all, Ilizar. And it's also a terrible Pokemon, but, you know, the creepy thing is the main thing. See you around, Luco. Have a good visit. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Estequita says, just about any Pokemon can be made feasible. 
But if it looks like that, it looks like that. Oh, Jesus, Alex. That sounds extremely awesome. I, I don't know what the issue is there. All right, let's hit the next dungeon, shall we? The Secret Waterfall. So, this is the waterfall that supposedly has a secret. Ow! Yes, the water is coming down. That's that's what a waterfall is. This is incredible. I can barely stay standing to this deluge. I will interrogate you, waterfall. See? It's intense. If you were to fall into this waterfall, you'd probably be battered. I don't think it'd be pouring down this powerfully. Where should we even start looking? Hang on. I'm having a vision of the future. Uh oh, it's the evil one. Also known as Wigglytuff. Hey, Deckfish. I saw a vision of the future. What's the matter, Runner? I'm a time. Mon. You saw a lone Pokemon leap into this waterfall? Oh, that there's a hidden cave behind the waterfall? It looks like the water's coming down really heavily. Imagine if there's actually a solid cliff wall behind that waterfall. If we try to jump through, we'd be pounded badly. I'm gonna do it. And I'm going for it. This is happening. Putting my faith in you, runner. Don't ever do that. Dragon Age Inquisition has some decent story beats, some really bad story beats, some decent gameplay, and some really, really, really bad gameplay. That's my summary, Nemesis. Is it worth a playthrough? Yes, especially if you can cheat. Or play a mage, which is effectively cheating. <laughs> this is it. Be the bravest ever. Believe in me. No, I have not, Jesse's Ward. I've only played one Digimon game. It was on camera, even. Yeah, Mage is always the best option in a Dragon Age game, which... I didn't actually realize until years later, but it's true, and it's weird. I do not like Spongebob or Squidward, no. It's a cave! You were right. Let's go exploring. And we're not watertight. I mean, I don't want to sound dismissive. Dragon Age Inquisition does have some good stuff. It's just... Some of the design decisions in that game are extraordinarily stupid. Hi, Roman Cure. We're doing alright. As you can see, we're investigating the extremely eerie waterfall cave. Yeah, the war table can go to hell. And, and not just because of the, the, the delay thing, it's because of the specific missions and quests they decided to put in the war table, including substantial and plot-relevant items, but let's not get into that. And getting rid of healing was just... I don't know what the hell they were thinking on that one. Uh, this is on the DS, if that's what you're asking, Roman Cure. 
I looked it up. The official term for the third game is apparently sister game. So this is the sister game of the Explorers of Time slash Darkness one. Yeah, no healing is part of why mage is so strong in Inquisition. Because they can heal. Sort of. It, it's dumb, but whatever. It's a thing. Grimer wants to join your team. Yes. Team Poison. Anybody want to be the Grimer? That's hysterical, Saurian. You know what? I'm going to give that to Takoya. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to make Team Poison. I mean, in a game like this, having a poison type is probably going to be really nice. Yep, and now we've just got... Oh, jeez, he just joins us. What's the party max? Does anybody know? Four. So we need a, a another poison type. Hmm. So we start out with... Let's see. So we've got poison gas... Pound, Harden, let's let's turn off Harden. Uh we'll leave Mud Slap on. <laughs> I don't even know if Ralts are in this one. As recruitables, anyways. Let's see. Any questions from people who are here? Um. <laughs> ah! Well, I just got a question from DJT while I was looking at the document. Have you played Arceus? No. I will not be playing Arceus until I play it on camera. As is pretty much my norm. My niece will not stop showing off Arceus because she loves to do that. No! Loke! Yeah, I'm 99% certain I'm going to like Arceus because of just what I've seen so far. If nothing else, the vehicle and mechanisms of playing the game are hugely improved. Like, this is some of the best quality of life stuff I've ever seen in a Pokemon game. You know how long it takes to get in and out of combat in Arceus? Less than a second. Think about that for a second. Alright, new combat, All right, and combat's done. Just BAM! Like that. I love it. Seconds and minutes? Nope! Dude, speaking of someone who's done the poison challenge several times, Muck is actually a hell of a tank. Oh. 
And of course, we're poison type because we're Bulbasaur, so. I suppose I should use this on Loke, speaking of which. She's bloodthirsty there. I'm sorry, Act. I'm sorry. I love it. I died, what, five times in a row in the third dungeon of the game. Meanwhile, Act is over there. Oh, I think this game's just too easy. Yep, yep. Uh, I spit on it. It's pathetic. But too easy. Any scrubs who would, I don't know, random example, die on the very, very third dungeon five times in a row or just they, they just need to get good you know good morning Castrus. uh which one was orange fighting meh it was it was the way, Hazardous. I know how to get you in here Im immediately. I just need to talk about environmental es issues or getting good. Oh, you'll be proud, Hazardous. I got my very first complaint in the YouTube comments about the uh, Elden Ring run. Yay, took quite a level. I'm honestly surprised it took this long, really. Oh, excuse me. You got this, Dakota. Hopefully. Live, Dakota! No, it's okay. I understand that I'm terrible, Ek. Even though I did all bosses and all dungeons and Elden Ring without cheating. And also Bloodborne while we're on the subject, because I did that too. Eh, too many water types. I don't want water types. Whoa! Okay. Well, uh, in Elden Ring, I did actually find access to cheats that do actually work. I... It was like three paragraphs, Alex. No, I'm not even joking. It was a big complaint. And I'm not going to list the specifics for reasons I feel like I don't need to elucidate upon. Um, let's get rid of this. I have too many healing items. How's that for a weird problem to have? Either I just need a bigger bag. God. I did. I have no opinion on Mega Gengar. I don't think I've ever even seen Mega Gengar. It exists, probably. So I trust you that there is such a thing as a Mega Gengar. That's about all I got.
Oh, no, Rain Bright, not like that. Not like that. No, I meant actual cheating. Like, I had access to actual cheats for Bloodborne through save manipulation, although I only had one cheat there, if you'll remember. It was the ability to give myself uh, Axe Souls. I forget what it was called in that one. And I had access to a huge number of cheats in Elden Ring. I could have made myself invincible. I could have made my, uh, added a mutator to my attack speed or my move speed. Basically, I could have changed everything. I could have mega cheated in Elden Ring. So we found a bunch of gems. Over there, it's a gigantic gem. It's so pretty. I wonder what it tastes like. Everyone will be amazed if we take this back. It's it's a, such a huge gem. Look at it. No, it's 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 valid to clarify, Rainbright. It is a valid thing to bring up. How many times I've cheated in StarCraft One? Oh, which playthrough exactly? Like my very first playthrough, I cheated the entire campaign because I wasn't good at RTS games at that point in my life. StarCraft One, as I've said many times was the game where I got used to the idea of uh, accepting loss to get better. Mm. Alright, so hang on. Valerian says, You must bow! Therefore, thank you very, very much, Valerian. I do always very, very much appreciate. Thank you. Now, you're probably putting that towards, uh... I don't know what you're putting that towards. Lufia 1 and 2 are already funded. So... Instructions unclear. Ended up in ditch. <laughs> I mean, if you want to clarify, feel free to clarify, but it's going to leave that there. This is really stuck. Ghastly's all right. Gengar's stupid. Hunter's all. Hun Hunter is awesome. It's actually one of my favorite ghost types. So you could move it either. Maybe you should both try it. Wait a minute. I'm having a vision of the future. Loke just happened to push the gigantic gem. No. And we're dead. Hi! Are you two okay? He plopped down from nowhere. Oh, you startled everyone. I like how Takoida, the Grimer, is not in the pool. This is the hot spring. Hot spring. Indeed, this is the hot spring. It works wonders on tired muscles and creaky joints. Many Pokemon visit here. Tell me, youngsters, have you a map? Uh, yeah, yeah, here. We are here. This is the hot spring's location. Oh. The waterfall's here, so... Hey, check this out. Water carried us all the way over here. 
My goodness, it was the water that carried you all this way. What a long journey that must have been. Let the hot spring wash away your fatigue before you make your way home. Did that just make us tired? Granted, I don't do hot springs, so I don't know, but like, wouldn't that just relax you? Behind the waterfall is a cave, and the deepest part of the cave is a gigantic gem. If you push on the gem, it triggers a trap of some kind. Surprisingly, you were flushed off to the distant hot spring. Is that the gist of it? Yes. It's really disappointing we couldn't bring the gem back. Oh, no, no, emphatically no, this is a major discovery. Really? Undoubtedly. After all, the presence of the cave behind the waterfall, no one knew about that before now. Oh, I see. We made a discovery. When I had those dizzy spells. The shadow of that Pokemon I saw. The flashback problem continues. That shape. I have only seen that shape one other place before. Dun, dun, dun! Your discovery is amazing. The guildmaster must be told. Oh, what's wrong, Rudder? Huh? You're saying Wigglytuff may have been at the water ball before? Emphatically, no, that's inconceivable. Even if it were so, the guildmaster wouldn't have ordered you to investigate place, right? However, since you insist, I will confirm with the guildmaster. Why would they want to spoil their own discovery? How strange. But we see the future, not the past. I don't know, Rainbright. When I asked the Guildmaster, he mulled it over for a bit. Then he said, Oh, memories, sweet memories. Yumta. He danced around a bit. Then he said, Yes, well, I think hard. Maybe I did go there once. And that's just what the Guildmaster said. Okay, so apparently we did see the past. That's kind of disappointing. We really thought we'd discovered a new place. I wish he told us to discard. It could be <clears throat> erratic at times. Even I can't fathom what goes on in his head. That's too bad for you. Nevertheless, I expect your best ever tomorrow. Sucks to be you. Enjoy your food. I was going to look something up, but I can't remember what now. Right. Okay. So yeah, we'll find out if there's evolutions when we hit level 16. Jay was exhausting. I should get to sleep early. Ah, we went through a lot today. You know what? It was incredibly fun for me. Sure, there was that huge letdown. It was our first exploration. I thought I was going to explode from excitement and anticipation the whole time. It made me realize I made the right decision in joining a team. One day I'm sure I'll solve the, the riddle of my secret fragment. It's the dream I have. If it came true, I'd faint from sheer happiness. I don't think that's how that works, but okay. I can explore because of you, runner. Yes. Remember that thing that happened? Five minutes ago? I'm the biggest chicken around, and even I managed to work up the courage. And it was all because you were with me, Runner. Thanks. Oh yeah, you know I was thinking. I noticed something about your dizzy spells. You always seem to be touching something when they happen. Oh my god, you're right. Here's another flashback. Azrael is still adorable when bowing. Uh huh. Yep. 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 Can Can we get on with this, please? I was always touching something. That's when I get those dizzy spells. When I touch something, I see something connected to it. Psychometry! 
When we rescued Azrael, you had a vision of the future, but this time you saw Wigglytuff going into the cave, which means you saw an event that occurred in the past! That's true. In other words, if you touch something, you see it's past or future. This could be something totally incredible. You can use that in lots of ways. Yeah, we, we totally have the Echo Blade, Jamal. Not just for exploring, either. The ability can be useful for many things. It's fantastic. I guess that's true. That doesn't mean I oh, <laughs> always get a vision when I touch something. Yeah, Mom. My echoes are only useful when the plot decides they are. Guildmaster wants to see you right away. Guildmaster, I brought you Team Horizon. Guildmaster. Guildmaster? Hiya! Your team went through a lot today. Yes, a lot, lot. But don't worry. I'm keeping watch on your activities. I should tell you why I called you here. We're planning to mount a full expedition soon. The guild will explore someplace far away. It's much harder than exploring a nearby area. So we need to prepare for the big trip properly. We carefully choose which members go on the expedition. Really? Usually we would never, ever, consider rookies to be expedition members. But you're working so very hard. That's why we're making a special exception this time. We decided to include you in this list of candidates for the expedition. Really? Now, now, you haven't been chosen as expedition members yet. There's still time before we send out the expedition. If you fail to do good work before then, you can't be expected to be selected. I'm sure you two can do it. Try hard. Team Skull! No comment. I was gonna say, I think this predates uh, Sun and Moon by a decent chunk, so. Yo, yo, yo! yo. Yay, expedition! Yay! It's been a long time since we went on an expedition. I mean, it's gonna be picking from all of us, right? Precisely. We'll depart in a few days. We'll choose the most worthy apprentices. Work hard. Oh my gosh! This is exciting. I'd love to do this. Let's work hard! Hooray! You two. Check the job bulletin board. What the, duh. What do you think I'm gonna do? Look sharp, Diglett. Let's do a good job today. Can I talk to you yet? Nope. Hey, you wanna hear something weird? Oh, oh yawn attack, excuse me. I'm tired today, I apologize. Um Someone recently was like, hey! God, what was it? How do they phrase it? They were talking about a game that came out a long time ago. And I was like, well, when did it come out? And they finally mentioned it came out in 2005. And I was just like... Anyways. <clears throat> you two must recruit Zubat. Wait, haven't we seen them before? Hey, it's a flashback! Oh my god. They're two crooks who stole my relic fragment. Just for that, I'm gonna get all kinds of poison types on my team and it'll be awesome and you'll suck. What's so funny about a team checking out the job bulletin board? You're an exploration team? That's right. Although the way we operate isn't always... By the book. What a surprise. Why would you be here? We wanted to become exploration team members. That's why we're training at this guild. What? 
You want to become real deal exploration team members? You, come with us for a second. What? Ah! Now, don't take what I'm about to say the wrong way. You should just forget about being an exploration team. Why? Well, you're timid. You scare easily. A scary cat like you can't cut it on an exploration team. That's... weirdly nice of you to say that, actually. It's true, I'm timid. But that's why I'm training, so I can overcome my shortcomings. Even now, I'm working hard to be picked for the guild's expedition. Oh? An expedition, you say? Well, effort only gets you so far. Ain't that the truth. You don't get picked for the expedition party if you don't have talent, right? It all comes down to talent. Pure talent. Big talk. You sure talk a lot about talent, but what kind of skills do you have? You were so weak, We even even we beat you. Whoa, well, we didn't have the chief with us. Chief? Yes, you're right. Team Skull, our exploration team, has three members. Our chief is incredibly talented. To put it bluntly, he's brutally tough. It's the chief. If the chief was around, we'd snap you like a twig. Oh, speaking of the chief, I can smell him coming right now. All right. It's a. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, admittedly. Oh, what's this awful stench? It's like rotten cheese. It's foul. My eyes are burning. Move it. You want to end up like that wimp over there. No. Yeah, I was expecting a muck, but no, it's a skunk tank. You showed them, Chief. You're the best. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You sniff out any jobs that'll bring into cash? Eh, it only posted cheap tasks, but there's something else. It's got the potential to go big. An expedition? That does sound tasty. Doesn't it? Let's get out of here. We need to do some plotting. Come on. We all scare that. In the public performance. See you around, wimps. You okay, Runner? Oh, it was horrible. It was... Reminded me of being a janitor at Arby's again. Well, okay. I was never a janitor at Arby's. I was a manager at Arby's. Who did the work of a janitor because we didn't have a janitor at Arby's. I am a wimp. A big chig... Ch I guess you're right. I'm a big chicken. No, that's not... Whatever. I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna be cheerful and keep trying. I completely misread that. I thought it said bonk, bonk, bonk. And you're probably thinking, why would you pick that? One of the most common things that a huge number of people do, including several people regarding me, whenever I'm being excessively self-detrimental, uh, you know, putting myself down, is whap, whap, whap. So I was just sort of expecting that to be the answer. So I was going to be like, whap, whap, whap. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Yep, yeah, sorry, Loke. You were a chicken, because I can't read. <laughs> Who knew? Well, unfortunately, that's a lot of stuff for Mount Bristle. Which can go to hell. Alright, hang on. A watering cloud. Now, don't you look at me like that. Gosh, it's not nice to stare. By golly, it has nothing to do with me. 
Those guys you were talking with, they looked like some rough customers, huh? Why are they had such an awful stench in our guild? It's a mystery! Listen, if you're not yelling, then you're not spelling. Man, I don't know, I can't rhyme. What do we got here? I'm also going to be honest, I've never heard b -b spelled B-O-K -okay before, so that didn't even occur to me. Yeah, exactly. B-A-W-K is how that is almost always spelled in English. Ugh. Thank you, Jesse Ward. As ever, and as always. And you're putting it towards... Tuning into streams from now on, which honestly would be pretty awesome. Join us. Which is actually White Knight Chronicles, too. But, you know. uh, yeah, I was debating. I guess we'll try Mount Bristle. We'll see how this works out. Oh, God, Act, that's an interesting question. I mean, this game certainly does have a core combat. To say it doesn't would be inaccurate. Uh yeah, let me take these Mount Bristol quests. And I don't think I'm gonna take the outlaw quest in Mount Bristol because I don't think I can manage that, to be completely honest. really disco I've never really had that issue with it for me research is more like very carefully trying to put as many pieces of the the Legos in as I can to actually make the completed picture and there's usually some little piece here or five pieces here or 30 pieces here that I'm missing and so forth and so on hello why not good day is it not the new shop Spindus cafe is open this wonderful shop is overflowing with hopes and dreams is it not Hopes and dreams. That's right. Why not come in? Don't be shy. Uh, why not? That was a big place. Hello, and welcome to Spinda's Cafe. My name's Spinda. I'm the owner of this cafe. Yeah, I, I know... So, to, to tie into what Alex just mentioned about how it's hard to know everything about a subject, I know World of Warcraft extraordinarily well. I learned something new about it just a few weeks ago. This is a cafe for explorers who enjoy finding new things every day and are constantly challenging themselves. Cafe for explorers? That's right. It's natural to want to refresh yourself with a hearty, delicious drink after exploring. We are delighted to provide this service to explorers. We trust it will bring them happiness. What is wrong with your eyes? Today's our grand opening. Allow me to show you around. This is a juice bar. You've undoubtedly collected gummies and apples during your explorations. Am I right? Here, those edibles can become delicious drink sensations. I, Spinda, will take your ingredient and make my incredible skills to create a delectable drink for you. 
So we brought you an apple, you make apple juice? That's right. That's how it works. And then you can sit back and share exploration stories. Yeah, everyone, this one time, this innocent little child was, was taken hostage by a drowsy, and it took me six days to rescue him. Because <laughs> I suck. <clears> hmm. <throat> I bet you have a bunch of items in storage you've picked up in your travels and have little use for, am I right? Sometimes you have to throw out your extra items to make room. Doesn't that just seem wasteful? There could be explorers in dungeons out there who are desperately in need of the very things you have locked in storage. That's what we thought too. That's why we established this facility. Bring your extra items and trade them for items you want. One Pokemon's trash is another Pokemon's treasure. So it's a trading hub. Cool. I know that was a whirlwind tour, but I hope you've got an idea what this place is. Seems a pretty fun shop. Hey, Eclectic. May the 4th be with you. Happy Star Wars Day, is everyone, everyone. I haven't said it to you yet. Were you just at the cafe? Perfect timing. Truth is, I have something to ask you. In the past, you've wanted to take team members with you to explore. They waited for you at this watering hole. But now the cafe is open. Everyone's just saying they want to relax at the cafe. I completely understand that. I mean, I understand how they feel. So what do you think? Would you like to meet up with your team members waiting at the cafe? Okay. Almost forgot. I placed a secret signpost here. You must have rung the bell because your team was assembled already. When you ring the bell, I come from Miguel and you can assemble your exploration team. I just got another person! I'll never evolve on Falkenstein. Reject evolution! Or, you know what I mean. Can't wait till we evolve, which will happen in the very next mission, according to Act. That's a time gated thing, right? Which makes sense because the time gears are involved. I've heard the time gear of the Tree Shroud Forest was stolen. Because of that, time has stopped in Tree Shroud Forest. So it's so much horrible news lately. It's discouraging. Stealing time gears is unthinkable. Who go around stealing them? We have no motivation at all. Why do we even bother forming a team? Mood. the team that delivers happiness. Hey gang, what kind of items should we buy today? I want a blue gummy. I want a green gummy. But wait! Let's think about it for a second. We don't have any money, do we? Oh, you're right. That's so silly of us. <laughs> We're poor and can't afford food. <laughs> uh, oh, good times. Good times. Ah, you ask why we're here all the time. It is because we learn much from the sea. To be deep and expansive. Don't think we're shirking our work. That isn't our intention. We insist you understand us clearly on this point. O oh, sea, hear me. O oh, sea, teach me. O oh, sea, understand me. Yeah, you notice they were using plurals there, whereas earlier they were using singulars, so at this point I have no idea.
I'm not sure about Balkenstein. I, mean, I suppose it'd be more accurate to say, I don't know. So, I don't know. Hey, Dakota. I collected a bunch of apples, so I had some drinks made. Drinks were so fresh and juicy and delicious. But that was it. I thought my belly would be filled with HP restored. It seems like a drink made from apple or orange has no effect. That's interesting. Hey, Pachirisu. You can bring me a favorite ingredient. I can, you can have a delicious ingredient made. Hmm. Hmm. Seems like a good idea to trade in unused items you've collected for something you want. I've got too many orange berries, so I'm thinking about trading them in. <laughs> There's a new scent. Wow, this shop is incredible. It's like a paradise for explorers. So, let's play with this a little bit. Uh, give me a second. Because I know the difference, but I don't remember which is which. So give me a sec. Uh, let's just do apple. I don't understand what those numbers are. That's the... It's not that I don't believe you, it's that I'm confused. Yeah, Sphinx, 403. Wow. Why? <laughs> Just, why? Whatever. Feel happy! Sweet! Okay, so let's try something else. Orange gummy. Sure. something else later. Uh, we all know Mew is the first Pokemon. I mean, duh, right? Or Arceus is another possible answer there. Oh, right, hang on. Okay, so is that male or female? I don't remember. Alright, so... Point out the lipstick for me here. Oh, you meant the Wobbuffet. I don't know why I thought you meant the Zigzag. I was talking to the Zigzag Zoon when you asked that. That's why I was thinking. Yeah, no, the Wobbuffet's female. That's that's obvious. Because the zig so the Zigzag Zoon is it's the pattern of the the offset. Like, if it's orange, light, or, or it's it's brown, di light brown, brown, light brown, or light brown, brown, light brown, br light brown. Depending on this male or female. I'm saying it wrong because I can't talk today, or any day, apparently. <clears throat> but you get my point. Sure. 
Sure, let's get some prize tickets. Whatever. Red, yellow, or blue? Someone quick. I'm seeing blue. I wonder which one I'm thinking of then, Alex. Radar orb. I know that stripe thing's a thing. I thought it was zigzag zoo, but obviously I'm wrong. Because you just looked it up. I wonder which one does that. Which one's Super Mystery Dungeon? I obviously have not played it, but... Ironically, the 3DS would be much harder to, for me to stream than DS, so I'm kind of glad we're not doing that one. For purely selfish reasons. Oh yeah, I was going to do that too, wasn't I? Star Wars Day. Okay, so that's water. It's ghost. It's fire. So let's grab that. Looks like that's all I have. No, go to bed, Detailer Smith. <laughs> be responsible. Come on. The game will still be there tomorrow, and you can enjoy it more when you're a little bit less strung out over it. There's my honest advice. I know, right, Alex? It's really been frustrating. Like, I, I don't blame the individual, but yikes! I do know that the speedrunning community, especially for the GDQ circle, has started kind of shying away from 3DS games because of the hassle involved. Last I checked, which was admittedly over a year ago at this point, the 3DS capture cards they had that still worked had to be custom set up and repaired because they couldn't get replacement parts anymore. Yay. Yeah, apparently no one wants to stream 3DS games. 
I mean, in all in total sincerity, one of the biggest reasons I want a Switch that has a 3DS slot in it is to make it so much easier to stream 3DS games. Like, there's other things I would like about that, but God, that would make my job so much less of a pain for 3DS games. No, there isn't loader. That's exactly the problem. Everyone's dancing for some reason. My IQ increased twice. I'm just I'm just that smart. I'm just so smart, guys. I can't, I can't even. Uh Absolutely gum gum. Reggie was awesome. You know what? That's a good point, Loader. Two times zero is still zero. Ah. Uh, thank you, Fife. As always. I'll put it towards the classic wows. Thank you. Okay, let's head out. Oh, let's, let's save, actually. Alright, we're doing Bristle. Up to 8th floor. Floor 8, maybe? Yes, this game is probably going to score better than Elden Ring. I mean, I hope it scores better than Elden Ring. Alright, let's see here. Now's a good time for questions. Go, my minions. Kill in my name. Let's see. Are Skun Tanks good in any mainline poking them games? Actually, yeah. There's several Poison and uh, Dark types, and Poison and Dark types, which are really good at tanking, specifically. So, yeah, Skun Tank is a pretty good, uh, what do they call it, barrier, I think. Uh, wow, classic, Trihexia. Ignoring the fact that FF14 1.0 isn't available outside of emulators, FF14 1.0 is the worst game I have ever played in my life, without exaggeration or hyperbole. WoW Classic is not even on the same category as, uh, as, uh, FF14 1.0. Anyone want to be a Geodude? I'm gonna spoil right now, I'm not gonna bring you to much. I want more poison! Yeah, I, I know. Sorry. Looks like Paranoid. Which uh, is not all gonna fit, so we're just gonna call you Paranoid. Actually, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Paradroid! No, it is the worst video game I've ever played in my life. Yes, that's not a joke. It's not an exaggeration. Every other video game I've played is legitimately on a level above FF14 1.0. Oh 
we got a four-man team now. Hell yeah. Should probably get out of here. Uh, okay. Get him, Dakota! And you're probably thinking, but lore, how bad could FF14 1.0 be? Do me a favor and watch the first 90 minutes of the very beginning of the FF14 lore run. Because I spend 90 minutes breaking down everything wrong with FF14 1.0. And it took me 90 minutes to explain how bad it was. So no. Quest 64? Uh-uh. Superman 64? Nope. Mummy Demastered? Not even close. Mega Man X7? Still not there. Anthem? Not even on the same category. You, you, you're not getting it. People in chat clearly are not understanding this. FF14 1.0 is so bad, nothing else is even on the same category of bad. That's fine, Alex. They got this. I did a theoretical review score for FF14 1.0. Purely by memory, of course, because I couldn't actually do it. And it scored in the negative hundreds. Which, if you know anything about our current review system, should be extremely impressive. I mean, if you sat down and tried to make a game worse than FF14.1.0, you'd probably succeed. I didn't do one, Mr. Nuclear, and I never will. Just a cut, cut that off. You're, you're still not getting it. People are just not understanding it. You're comparing it to games that are so much better than If you really want to understand, I spend 90 minutes explaining it at the beginning of the FF14 lore run. Right at the beginning. Hey, Larian. Still not getting it, Zalo. I'm honestly surprised that you even ask, Mr. Nuclear. What could I possibly say about Elden Ring? Any of the lore tidbits I would say about the game would just be me repeating things that other people who are better about it, and who are entirely focused on, you know, Souls game lore, have already done. I, I don't particularly feel like copying someone else's essay. You know? And most of the gameplay stuff, I would say is stuff nobody really wants to hear. And honestly, I just don't feel like dealing with the comment section. There's not really any benefit, and there's a whole lot of detriment, so nope. I got a YouTube comment on the head-on run saying, Hey, Lore, I disagree with you when you say that enemy variety is good, because I think the enemy variety in the game is good. I'm not making this up. This actually happened. Uh, apparently I don't have an apple on me. That's interesting. I actually thought I did. So, Final Fantasy XIV came out, and it's was in what we were going to refer to as a terrible state, Larian. It is the worst game... I have ever played. Ever. Again, not exaggeratingly, not hyperbolically, just absolute total garbage. 
It did so badly that it nearly killed the company in question. Square Enix. So then they overhauled it and did a complete restructure into FF14 ARR, which is the FF14 that I was reviewing. It is, in every way that matters, a different game. The fact that it still has the name FF14 in the label does not make it the same game. Okay, so we got an apple. I don't know, I feel like, so I haven't answered X's question yet, and I've been kind of chewing on it. I feel the combat of this game is much more interesting when we're not in narrow corridors, which is a lot of the game. It's one step away from grid-based tactics when you get out of the corridors. Normal type. Hmm. Like, I like the concept of it. I like the way it's structured. I do wish there was a little bit of, like, maybe a, a turn indicator. Like in, say, Final Fantasy X, for example, where you could see, okay, that's your turn, and then their turn, and then this turn, and then this turn. I know that's kind of weird to do, but considering the game does have an in-combat and an out-of-combat state, I think it could be something that would be doable. But that's a minor complaint, and I can generally figure out what whose turn it is at any given point in bar. At time. In time, excuse me. Because it's actually fully turn-based. Like, the game is frozen right now until I move. It's just... You can kind of move freely until you enter combat. Like, right here. And now we're in combat, so I can no longer do that. As for the roguelike thing, I don't know. do know about diagonal movement. It's honestly something I'm probably not going to bother with too much because I have to do this to do it. Yeah, Dakota nearly died there. That's okay. That's why we have these on us. I have some health, Dakota. There we go. But yeah, I do like the core concept, believe it or not. And as with most uh, grid-based games like this, <laughs> just let's use one of those. Um, it makes sense for th some moves having multiple ranges, like the fact that there's uh, the quick attack, which is a two-range move, is actually significant. Excuse me. And I like that. I, li I like that there's some relevance to having different ranges and different abilities and blah, 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 blah. You're trying to poison a poison type there, Dakota. Don't. Well, yeah, but I kind of want Dakota to live, Lord Aramon. I'm not trying to kill him. So, I am using a PlayStation 3 controller, Tar Hunters. Good night, Deckfish. Have a good one. Now. Getting this working on a PC is a hassle and a half, and I'm not gonna try to lie about that to you, but it has been extraordinarily worth it ever since I actually got it working. So, that's my personal recommendation. You can also get a PS4 controller working on the PC. That's actually exactly the same amount of hassle, believe it or not, and a little bit less worth it, unless you're just using it for Steam. There's the catch. So obviously, this is not a Steam game. I'm not using this on Steam. But if you just want to play some random game on Steam, then uh, nothing's really stop Come on. Stopping you from just plugging in a PS4 controller and there you go, you're good, right? 
it's when you want to use a, a PS3 or a PS4 controller for everything, that's when it becomes a hassle, because you need to effectively get a separate software to force your computer to acknowledge that this is a controller. Be rescued! That's a good question, Gum Gum. Um, do you think the Empire bans reproduction? So hang on. We've got one last quest here. Switch Pro is, is a little bit easier, yeah. And yeah, Steam, that's why I had that proviso. If you want to get this stuff, um, if you want to get this stuff to Steam, on Steam, working on Steam, way easier. If, uh, you want to get it working for something like, I don't know, just a DS emulator, not that such a thing would ever be used on this show, a little bit more of a, tr a hassle. Uh, maybe, Gum Gum? I've never thought about it. And I never will. Oh, the Shellos is, like, right there. I mean, just tell me what it is on the DS, Alex. I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. Why? Yeah, okay. I already knew about why. Please accept this 10% of the money. Thanks. Wait, what? Oh, shoot. Well, whatever. Low t Anybody want to be low tad? It's actually Star Trek, which is extremely restrictive on cloning. Go figure. I mean, Gum Gum just sounds like a, a name for this, doesn't it? In a good way. I don't mean that as a bad thing. Good morning, Shadow Machine. It's been enjoyable-ish. Hang on, let me do a flashback to me talking about it five minutes ago. I wish Shadow Machine was here. I would tell him all about how enjoyable this game is. But alas, he's not here. Sorry, I have something else I have to do today. Please take over Sentry Dude again. There is one person in the history of the world who has ever woken me up early that I've been okay with that about. There has to be a Vigoroth. Uh, nope? Okay. Yeah, it's my niece. Back when I used to live with her, she would... You know, so, back when I was taking care of her full time, her mother would have already left for work before she would wake up. So, she would wake up and then she'd come get me up and be like, Blog! That's why I was confused. Like, Electric doesn't run fast. 
Apparently it does, so whatever. I, well, sure thing, Alex. I believe you, buddy. <laughs> Nobody tell Alex how incredibly insane and awful he is. All right, so let's see here. Um, favorite Pokemon design, Crobat. to be a Persian. were merely adequate. Yeah, it's true. We got 50 gold and an orange berry, which we don't want or need. Student dorms. Oh my god. I don't even want to talk about student dorms. It's probably the closest I've ever been to actually living in a barracks. Like, imagine a slightly larger than average closet. In fact, yeah, that dorm was smaller than the room I'm in right now. Time to introduce our new allies. Holly, I wonder what kinds of Pokemon they are. No, it's like rotten cheese again. It's them. I'm coughing. I'm Zubat. And I'm Team Skull's leader. Kuzma <coughs> Skunk Tank. <laughs> what, you're already acquainted? That simplifies things. These three aren't joining us as apprentices, they'll be joining our expedition. What? Why are you so shocked? Nothing, sir. That one always overreacts to every little thing. Very well, then. Gilbaster's made his decision. He has decided having this trio will take part in the strategy. strategy. Impossible to coordinate if we work together right away. So they'll live with us for a few days, only for a short while. Treat our guests with hospitality. Doesn't something really stink about this? How can the Guildmaster stand for this? I hope this ends soon. Why are we putting it? Why are they putting it? Where are you? This stinks. How do you expect us to be cheerful when. Guildmaster, his reach is building! <laughs> the Guildmaster gets angry. It'll be horrific. Be cheerful, even if it hurts. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is not funny. But I'm gonna explain why, okay? <coughs> this is a real-life work policy thing. There are actual businesses, especially in Japan that follow this exact policy. You know how we have the the carrot and the, the stick thing? They have, oh God, what's it called? There's a term for it. Hang on. Let's see if I can find it really quick. All 
Actually, you know what? Here, I'll do it this way. Is it called Kaizen? Yeah, I don't know. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, Japan is pretty extreme about it. I can't remember what it is. I've actually encountered this in real life. I have worked at places that apply this thing. Sweets and whips is apparently what it's referred to. Uh, Ame Tomuchi. Ame Tomuchi, that's the thing. In short, you need to be all, everyone's happy and everything's wonderful, but you don't want to upset the boss. He's terrifying. Oh, no. If you keep doing what you're currently doing, if you don't put in 115% today, you're going to upset the boss. And then the boss makes some extremely stupid decision. Everyone's like, oh, no. And they're like, wait, no, we've got to be positive. And this, this morning chant thing is also a real thing. You start out every morning with, with you start the work day with let's go, choo, and it's just just so anyways. Do not find funny. Because I almost guarantee you with near total certainty. We're not going to get to beat the crap out of the uh, Wigglytuff at some point and usurp him. It's just going to be the gag for the entire game. Yeah, Walmart did that for a while. Some places will force you to do that. Like, <sighs> what was it? It was some kind of food place. Not a fast food, not a chain. It was a local place. But they forced, you, uh, they forced the people there to do a little bit of a chant every morning and... Every time someone walked in, they'd be like, and then when they left, they'd be like, just every freaking time. And I just, I felt so bad for those people. Our guildmaster's a really special guy. Yeah, not the word I'd use. Team Skull's kind of scary. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I'm I'm kind of down. I would love to visit Japan someday. I'd love to sightsee and enjoy the food and the, just soak in stuff, you know. But, God, I would never want to live there. Let me walk that back. I would never want to work there. I'd probably never want to live there. I'm glad I'm out from that cloud of suspicion. No one's giving me the stink eye anymore. Complaining about the smell doesn't help. We're gonna have a future time. Yeah. Seems we're living here with you wimps for a while. We'll put up with you. Expedition should be a joke. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, there's one little thing. Will you wimps get picked? <laughs> Congratulations, Ross. Welcome to Final Fantasy X-2. Enjoy. Now, see, here's the thing. I'm actually in favor of making the workplace a good place to work at. Um, also referred to as Gda. But if there's a difference between I want to make my employees happy and you're going to pretend you're happy or you're fired. Like, there's the old joke, right? The beatings will continue until morale has improved. <clears throat> but... It's not a joke in some cases, and it's just... I don't have words. I don't have words. Okay, hang on. So we don't really have a lot of stacking here. We've got an A. Ooh. Gives a nice reward, but there's no way we can take out an A right now. Yes. Uh, by the way, hi, Luca. The game, so... I'm gonna paint some smiles on your soul! Um, <laughs> the game's decent so far. I'm with it. Uh... Ah, 
Yeah, sure. Let's do Drenched Bluff. You want in on this number? Then show me your moves. There's nothing wrong with always smiling. Okay, real talk. My niece is at the age now where she has a practiced fake smile for when people take her picture. It's a fake smile. So what I'll do is I'll pretend to take the picture and then I'll do something to get her to laugh. And then I'll take the picture of my niece actually smiling. I've talked to her about this too. It's like you, you could just you don't have to force a smile, kiddo. But then she's like, well, everyone else wants me to force a smile. And it's like, yeah, I know they do. Oh hey. It's a pretty nice shop. I kind of like this team. It's a Sand Slash, a Scyther, and a, the Zigzag Zoom thing. I forget. Zangoose, that's it. It's a good combo. I collected a bunch of apples, so I had some drinks made. Oh, I already, I already read this. So at this point of the game act, I'd say the focus is very strongly on the gameplay axis. Perhaps ironically. So let's just see what an Orin drink is. Hey Baron. You had a question in the queue. Hang on. The queue script. I actually manually went through and made everything bolded so I could read it easier. And then it unbolded it, which is just the weirdest thing. I'm not even sure how it did that. Wow, my defense went down by two. Hmm, okay. Cool. That's good to know. <laughs> I didn't need that defense anyways. Let's see. Nero's ass, Tario, Nero's ass. Alex! Alex asked, how well do you think Dark Souls would do in 40k? Um. I'm pretty sure they'd get absolutely curb stomped by anything. Like, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure one Marine would just kind of his way through Dark Souls, and that would be the end of that. But never mind the fact that anybody, like half of 40k would look at Dark Souls and be like, whoa, heresy. Burn it. Burn it. Yeah, you can't die in 40k either. It doesn't stop him. Oh god, you're right, Asmus. They probably figure out how to just get the un the people to respawn in the f furnace and just lock them in there and be like, alright, have fun. Ah, gotcha, Zalok. That explains it. That's weird. Uh, gummy. So let's see, I answered that question. Hang on. Eat. There we go. That's honestly higher than I would think it is, Loner. I mean, granted, we do have some mean weapons in real life. We just don't talk about them all that often, so... Well, I suppose that's valid. Yeah, get a couple Terminators down here. We'll fix this up. Kong, Kong, Kong. There's been a terrible stench lately. Why am I imagining it? 
I don't think this is just a figment of my imagination. Want proof? Fewer teams are visiting Treasure Town lately. But the stench is keeping them away. Thanks, Gun Tank. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Other questions. There's a Melkor... Oh, I saw Melkor Blade. Yay! Okay, Melkor Blade says, Does Elden Ring ever have squick for you? Yes. Um, so Elden Ring definitely crossed the gross line. But it also crossed the squick line. I'm not going to spoil it here because no spoilers. But it's the snake boss. That was officially too much for me. That That's what I was just saying. No, no, no. We're just killing this guy. Just, just, just killing. Just killing. Ooh. Hey, yeah, that was, that was too much for me. Um... Yes, Alex. Although the snake boss itself was arguably the worst part. Bloodborne didn't get there until we went to the hell level of the dream. I was actually pretty impressed with that. Then we got to the hell level of the dream. Other teams are losing their stomachs for exploring because of the awful stench lately, but it hasn't affected us. Yeah, how could it get any less motivated than we are now? I hear explorers are staying away from this place because that stench won't go away. If you were to ask me, you'd have to be pretty soft to let the smell put you off. Not yet, Loke. We're working on it. We're working on it. I'm actually going to start changing things a little bit here. So hang on. So there was Melkor's question. I think I saw a Loke question in here. Aha! Have there been any attempts within the extant to corrupt the Empire from within? So I haven't read any yet. Don't worry, I'm not spoiling nothing. I'm good about non-spoilers. Um, there's a gross snake boss. There you go. That's, that's what you got. Um, so I haven't run, read, written anything about anyone trying to corrupt or usurp the Empire. Um, it would probably take a lot of work to even accomplish such a thing. Like, it's not like the Senate, where you just kind of, you know, slowly make everyone do say what you do. It's, it's a lot less centralized than that, partially by design. Even the military is mostly organized by navies. Uh, that is to say, a navy group. Nothing new. How old is the Empire? At which point in time are you asking? Like, it's not even founded until year, like, 30-something, I want to say. 37? Something like that. Make of this what you will, but Elden Ring is the best Dark Souls game I've played. That's, that's my recommendation on that, such as it is. No, Alex, and I never will. I'll go ahead and admit that flat out. Flat out. Better than Sekiro? Sekiro is not a Souls game, or not a Dark Souls game, to be more clear. Sekiro may be a Souls-born game, a FromSoft game, but so is Jedi Fallen Order, and Jedi Fallen Order is not a Dark Souls game. Elden Ring is Dark Souls, straight up. Just, just straight. It has the feel, vibe, approach, build design, equipment design, combat design, and counter design of Dark Souls. So in other words, I wouldn't call Bloodborne in that either, for example. So to clarify that statement a little bit, if you're into Dark Souls, you're probably going to like Elden Ring. If you're curious if you like Dark Souls, go ahead and try it out, see if you like it. I actually agree. It should have. They should have just called it Dark Souls Four and said screw it. But uh, ground type. Hmm. Which we're not going to bother with. Obviously. Please give me more stats. I need to make up for the two defense I lost to experimentation earlier. Because they're permanent stat ups. Uh, 
Okay, so that was Melkor's question. Let's see. I have a question from Baron. Are you in any way a card geek? Yes, actually. I don't get to do card geekiness all that often. Um, it's a little bit more of a racing thing than just car, car structure and, and function, but I am passively or distantly a car geek. I also have approximately one friend who's into cars, so I don't get a lot of people to enthuse or gush about it with. Did that be? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. No, gum gum, I have not. Okay. Damn it, Asdis. I loved Jedi Fallen Order. Unashamedly. Race driver? I mean, Senna's kind of an easy answer, but I'm actually going to go with Michael Schumacher. Uh, Schumacher, excuse me. I didn't like him at first, but then I really started, you know, not only watching him, but watching his career, and it's just... I don't know, he was he was a truly skilled racer, but he was also just kind of enjoyable to, to watch, right? I have played Republic Commando before, Act. Although, I mean, shrug. I even played it on camera for like 10 minutes, for whatever that counts for. So this is the gameplay as a look. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about Michael Schumacher was he kept winning. Which I know sounds like a weird thing to dislike, but I mean it. Need to make paranoid androids stop using rock polish because you're just spamming it so don't use that and don't use that okay go I was just say, rock polish is great on a boss fight during random trash. Yeah, that's just gonna slow us down. Oh Jesus! Someone else spawned. Run! Yay! <laughs> hey, low leveled. And will not evolve because screw you. I do have a Grimer. Also, Valerian donated earlier for, and I quote, Lufia 1. 
Now, you could probably tell that the problem with that. So I was wondering what else you would want to put Valerian's donation towards, Savica. I should warn you, it was a large donation. You could take your time with it, but he was specifically donating for you, so... If you pick nothing, that's acceptable. He's, his backup option is Star Trek Online. Although he doesn't need to put any more money towards that. Nobody does. Theoretically. Uh-oh, outlaw! Thankfully, it's a water type. It's fine, Harama. It only got a mega destroyed. <laughs> Hang on, let me try to sort the queue out a little bit here. The question queue. Rex asked, I think I saw Rex earlier, says, which video game setting would be the worst to live in that isn't Warhammer 40k? Dark Souls. And you're probably thinking, oh, you're just saying that. No, I'm really not. The problem with Dark Souls is that most bad settings, you can at least die, right? You can at least just be like, like, Fallout would suck, right? But at least in Fallout, you could just put a gun to your head and you're done. It can go down from there in some settings, and Dark Souls is one of those settings. Yeah, Dead Space is another wonderfully horrible one because there's no hope for Dead Space, so. Speaking of Paranoid Android, Paranoid Android has a question. Have you played Civilization Call to Power? No, sadly, I never actually got around to that one. I am too terrible to have played that game. There's the Car Geek question. Luco says, what would you tell your past self in regards to the way you do your content now? Uh, everything, basically. I'd be like, all right, listen. Here's all the crap I figured out over the years. This, 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 buy these lighting, use this equipment, get this set up here, buy three fans, this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, it's a lot, is what I'm trying to say. All the things. Let's see. I already answered that question, I already answered that question. What's your, Luco asked another question, what's your favorite romance in a video game? Oh, jeez. Um... You know, I, I know there's romances I've liked in video games, and for some reason I just can't think of any off the top of my head. Oof, you too. Well, we'll see. We'll see what we think of that. But for now, thank you very, very much, Ryman. Happy Star Wars Day. I'll put that towards anything Star Wars related. Um, okay, I will do that. I mean, a few of the romances in Mass Effect are pretty well done. I would not say FF10, to be blunt. Uh... Although FF10's romance is certainly better than FF8's, that's not saying much. Uh-oh. You've fallen into my trap. We got this. Okay, we got this. This is it. I'm gonna focus going down here. No, I think we got this. I think we got this. 
This is a place two areas under leveled from us, so we might actually have a chance here. Dude, that intro is so amazing, Ross. You could probably understand why I almost put the game down immediately after playing it. Or showing, seeing it. But you know, that's specifically why I went ahead and did this one instead of the, uh, the cliffside or whatever. The mountain. Sorry, I was thinking. I was just thinking about replacing Grimer and doing Sleep Powder, but I decided to go ahead and remove something from the board instead. Because I know I can one-shot those. Oh, I can't replace Grimer because he's wrapped. I did not solve a but I can go ahead and do solve uh, a Star Trek Online. I guess. Shingling uh, wants to join the team. Yes. And want to be a chingling? <laughs> See, I will be honest, even after years of playing and replaying Ten Two, speaking of someone who actually likes Ten Two, I still don't like that intro. And I don't think I ever will. I don't like the song. I don't like the direction. I don't like it from many angles. I can just absolutely dissect it. And uh, I have, in fact. I mean, we almost returned to the game after watching that intro. Make of that what you will. Yeah, that's... That's exactly why we didn't do the Mount Bristle thing, Lord Aramon. It's like, you know... Not that confident yet. Yeah, the much harder outlaws are up there. Which we are super not ready for. Biggest tonal shift for a direct sequel from a game. Final Fantasy X-2. No, really, think about it. FF-10 is dark, almost dreary in its tone. 
But then think about tin too, which is cotton candy. I, I'm sorry, there are other tonal shifts, but I don't think they even come close to that. Like, I could probably think of one if I really thought about it. Even darker, Savicum. Well, yeah, you can't use your badge on yourself, Alex. Duh. Star Tropics 2. No. <laughs> I don't really want to eat a monster, no. That's okay with everybody. That's an interesting statement, Zalok. Do me a favor. What is the tone of Zelda 1? We just had dinner, but I could go for more food. My belly will never get filled on grub like that. Do you have a belly? All right, guild members have all gone off to bed. Let's go find it now. <laughs> yes. Yes. We must find the guild's food stock. We'll find their food and give ourselves a proper feast. Would I make... Any type of analysis on Sonic games? I mean, I don't see why not. We did already review Sonic Forces once upon a time. Listen. I appreciate you, Le Valerian, but no subbing. No, you, there's save points, Tokoida, but yeah, I'm not super impressed with the save system, if that's what you're saying. Obtain stock to replenish the larder. Larder? You mean go get some food? Correct. We inspected the larder this morning for some mysterious reason. The guild's food stock has dropped sharply all of a sudden. Furthermore, our entire stock of perfect apples has disappeared. That was the only item to get completely cleaned out. Okay, got it, Zalok. So that's that's why we're having the communication issue here. So ignore gameplay completely for a moment and speak solely on narrative, on the story axis. And now answer me, which game has the biggest tonal shift from its sequel? Yes, I get it. <laughs> Devil May Cry 1 to Devil May Cry 2. Yeah. No, yeah, someone actually mentioned Jack 1 to Jack 2. I still think 10 to 10 2 is a bigger shift than that, but that was a hell of a shift. And yeah, DMC1 to DMC2 is a perfect example of a shift. Speaking of which, DMC2 to DMC3 is actually an even better example of a gi giant tonal shift. Looks like they're going out foraging for food. It's because we feasted last night. A thankless task thanks to us. <laughs> Let's mess with them. Well, no, but that doesn't work that way, Gum Gum. You'd have to go from DMC4 to DMC DMC. And then from DMC DMC to DMC5. Oh, dude, Rex. I've beaten Devil May Cry 2. I, I don't know what else to add to that. I, I actually really don't know what else to add to that. I've beaten Devil May Cry 2.
So let's do our test, shall we? DMC2 is probably five steps above FF14 1.0. DMC2 is a functional game um, with bad visuals, bad combat, boring boss design, repeat boss design, bad dungeon design, bad music, um, bad story, absence of story, bad voice acting, character assassination, and bullcrap final boss fight. So it's more incomplete than truly terrible. But... <laughs> it's still pretty bad. Let's try something else. It's a yellow gummy in a drink on a lightning. Or I mean an electric type. Nice. Listen, all I'm saying, Alex, is that Golden Sun is the worst game. No, um, Golden Sun, my biggest complaint with Golden Sun 1 is the same complaint I have about almost every old JRPG, including Final Fantasy VI. Way too high of an encounter rate. It gets in the way of enjoying the game to the point where it's frustrating. At least in FF6, you can eventually turn the encounters off. Not that I'm saying, like, that just makes it less bad. I'm not trying to defend FF6. I'm just saying. It's one of the reasons why Ink Nun is such a thing for me. It's like, yeah, can we just know out of this? Now, Golden Sun 2, I didn't enjoy nearly as much because I felt like the dungeons just were not at the same level of quality. But Golden Sun 1 was legit. <laughs> That's true, Act. Although I'm surprised that mobs spawn. Like, I noticed that earlier. I could just stay on one floor and fight forever if I wanted to. Tone deaf shift. I like it. Dragon Quest games have not always been dark, no. Well, I just used one blue gummy. No, that's why I clarified, Alex. Because go Gold Age 2 is total garbage! No, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. I just didn't like it as much as one, that's all. But yeah, the Dragon Quest thing... I actually talked about this because we reviewed Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3. The Dragon Quest thing actually got started with 3. Ah, fine. We'll upgrade Luke. I guess. There's the mysterious force. had a bigger bag. Alright, hang on. Let's go dump some stuff. <laughs> like you do. Oh, hey! Electrovire shot. Oh. Uh, you can link moves together. Linked moves are used one after the other in the same turn. Put a smart combo together and get awesome strikes. We'll get back to that. Dragon Quest 7. Dragon Quest 7 is a good game, but it absolutely has the Dragon Age 2 syndrome problem. The exact same problem I just had with Head On. It is way too long. It's actually not as long as people exaggerate it to be. It's only about 70 hour game total. But still, Dragon Quest 7 is too long. It is. <sighs> oh, 
only 70 hours. I mean, yeah, no, 70 is an extraordinarily long game, don't mistake me, it's just... Yikes. My 100%, to give you a bit of an idea, my 100% save was something like 120 hours. I say 100%, it's more like 90%, but you know how I do definitions. What most people would call 100%. All four of my characters were the uh, hero class and maxed. <sighs> Depends, Gum Gum. In general, though, anything under a minute is bad. But it does depend. Yeah, this is probably my favorite song in this game so far. Yeah, exactly. I've said it before, I've said, the songs you hear the most, you need to spend the most time and effort on. In most RPGs, that's like the overworld and the, and the, the battle song. But it depends. And for something like this, yeah, you want your hub, <clears throat> you want your hub song to not be something that drills into your brain and gets horrible. Like Persona 5. I, I hate to bring that up yet again, but as a reminder, that is a terrible example of how to do a hub song. Ooh, several gummies. Which one's pink? Poison! Yes! Yes! I'll, I'll check out Electivire in a second. Just give me a second. Yeah, 30 second overall. Ah! I mean, that was one of my biggest problems with Breath of Fire 2, if you were there for that particular stream. Breath of Fire 2 actually has some decent music in it, but its loops are super short. Like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to make this point. You need to understand. You need to know the darkness within. If I could find it. Problem is, I don't know the name of the song. So give me a second. It should be like this. This is it. This is the most common dungeon song that plays in Breath of Fire 2. Now, very technically, this song has, give me a moment, that's a 31 second loop, but if you're paying attention, you can see how this is actually layers of looping, because the whole loop is 31 seconds composed of two sections, which are very similar to each other, but each section is very similar to itself. It's just, oh my god. And again, that's one of the most common dungeon songs in Breath of Fire 2. So you hear that all the time. 
And that's why I use Breath of Fire 2 as the er example of badly looped music. The Chocobo loop in FF2 is really short. Uh, seven seconds, I believe. I'm not sure I've ever heard an, a song in a video game that has a loop that's shorter than seven seconds. Unless you count, like, low health sound as a song, which I don't, by the way. I mean, Back to the Future on the NES sucked, but what are you talking about? Like, I don't think that was less than seven seconds. I could be wrong, I don't know. If we're counting, like, ditties, we could go lower than seven seconds. But I don't count the Starman jingle from Super Mario Brothers as a song, to be completely blunt. non trader Yeah, there's tons of short jingles. Short repeating jingles, even. Like, here, hang on. Now, if you want to pull it technically, I'll, I'll give you it technically. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Hang on again. Oh, shoot. Now I can't find it. Oh, it's not here. They don't have it. Oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. You get spared. I already tortured you with the Breath of Fire 2 thing. I think I've made my point. Uh, I don't remember how long Dungeon Man's Loop is. I think it's something like 20-something seconds. Like, it's pretty damn short, but... Again, it's really hard to beat a 7-second loop for a song. I can tell, D. Taylor Smith. Good night! <laughs> Trader. If the Pokemon has a confused status or cowering status, its wildly aimed attack will not hit friends. Oh, nice. <sighs> okay. Yeah, no, that's a nice thing. I like it. Get Takoya in here. Oh, that should do it. A favorite meme song? I don't think I like any meme song, so I'm gonna go with no on that. I mean, Dungeon Man is specifically designed to be terrible. How much of a defense that is is kind of up to you, but you know. Let's see. Questions, questions. Oh, hang on. Dungeon first. I mean, this is, even though this is a DS game, this is effectively GBA art style, so that makes sense, Melkor. Looks like they're off and running. <laughs> we'll go after them. Come on. 
Let's see. Loner asked a question, but I don't know if Loner's here right now. Oh, this is a new dungeon, so we're gonna kind of be a little cautious here. Alex is now level 5! Yeah, we need to level you up a little. Nope, I've got one outstanding one loader. It says, how do you design a low-level Underdark module segment? Actually, maybe I did answer that question. Because I remember my answer to that question. Oh, hey! Well, Dakota found the exit. I mean, the problem is the Underdark is, by definition, the high-level zone, so... You know, the way that you design a low-level Underdark encounter is you keep it extraordinarily limited in scope and scale. Dakota, you are gonna die. Do me a favor. Stop it. It's funny you say that, Dakota. Um, the campaign we are currently playing through the Underdark, we started off at level 1, being rescued from slavery. But yeah, no, like, start off as someone who's, like, was part of a caravan, or who lives in one of the towns, and just dealing with really, really tiny local stuff. That's how you make a low-level campaign work in the Underdark. No, 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 Loner. Like, okay. Let's say you start in, uh, Gracklestone, for example. And you never leave Gracklestone. You're always there in that area. So you deal with local problems. Like, like set it urban, effectively, at that point. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, when they ask you to go head out into the Underdark to fight the Illithid Cave, you say, no, uh, sorry, I'm level two. <laughs> yeah, exactly, loner. So the other option that I came up with, I swear I told you this last time, but whatever, is, let's so the es escape slavery thing, right? So let's say you've just escaped slavery. Congrats. Your first goal is to get out of the Underdark. So what you do is you set the campaign, the, the adventure really, because it wouldn't be a full campaign, like right next to the exit, relatively speaking. And so the adventure becomes Dakota dying to Burmy. Which is very important. The adventure becomes getting out effectively by avoiding encounters or trying to minimize encounters, right? Like, uh. Because uh, some of the stuff down there will absolutely shred you. But there are low level encounters you can use, so it's not like you're completely devoid of options. Interesting. Well, rule zero is don't be a dick, Alex. So you want my team to stick together because rule... Th because don't be a dick? I knew it, Alex. You were always evil. Uh, I mean, it's okay, I guess, Act. I admit I wasn't even noticing it until you said something. Which probably says something about me. I've sort of been turning my brain off every time I enter one of these dungeons and just chatting. I don't mean that as an insult, it's just, it's like, alright, time to chat for a bit. Do, 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 do. You know, chill, right? Yeah, but rule zero applies in all situations, Alex. Also, that's not even rule one of D&D. In fact, that's not even rule two of D&D. 
So I'm afraid you're wrong on every account, Alex. Rule one is actually GM's word is law, or we're all here to have fun, depending on who you ask. Rule two is either we're all here to have fun, or GM's word is law, depending on who you ask. Rule three is don't split the party. Which is funny, because I don't agree with that. I split the party all the time without any real issues. Even in the Underdark. No, you can touch other people's dice as long as you're not cursed, like me. Yes, so, in, in the Underdark campaign I just mentioned, uh, we actually, so at one point in, this, in the campaign, several of them were like, hey, we want to head to the surface, and I'm like, but we need to go do this thing, and they're like, yeah, but we want to head to the surface. So they went to the surface, and I stayed in the Underdark by myself. I was fine. I did avoid combat. I am a monk. My stealth check is high. In fact, it's plus seven at this point. I was also escorting non-combatants. This is part of why we had to stay in the Underdark. Because you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just escort the non-combatants to the surface? Because they would die as soon as they hit the sunlight. Because they were fungi people. So, I had to stay down and escort them back to town so that they would be safe. We originally had a whole thing where some NPCs were going to escort them back to town. And then those NPCs decided to peace out and leave us, and that sucked, so... That duty fell to me. Now, here's the real talk, though. You know why you don't split the party? Does anyone know the real reason you don't split the party? Well, I'll tell you. It's exactly what Alex just said as I was saying that. Literally as I was saying that. The reason you don't split the party is because people feel left out. Real life people, the players. And speaking as a GM, especially, trying to keep everyone engaged when one person's over there doing this and that person's over there doing that, is its whole thing. I actually came up with a system, which I have already started implementing uh, on, on some of my camera stuff. Uh, well, being paralyzed sucks. Where I effectively add turns to people, even if they're not in combat. So in other words, so let's say, you know, Blade Javal has decided to go into town, and Takoita is going into the dungeon. So it's like, alright, Takoita, you get a turn, do some stuff in the dungeon, and then we squ split to Blade Javal, who is in town, who gets a turn, and so forth and so on. Harris wants to join the team. Sure. I was just debating that, because it feels like that's a status effector, but when you have a team, uh, a status effector actually becomes a lot more viable. I usually tend to not do status effect stuffs in Pokemon, but that's because you only have one person out at a time. What do you got? What do you got? Yeah, Leech Life, Poison Powder, Stun Powder, and Scratch. Do all of that. <laughs> By all means. Stick with me, buddy.
It's funny, I was just talking about how one of my biggest complaints of the dungeons is how corridor-y they are. And we get to this dungeon, which is more corridor-y than any dungeon we've had so far. Uh, I actually don't know, Dream Whisper. I wouldn't mind a Beedrill either, but... That's because I always have a fondness for Beedrills. Way back in the day, Beedrills were just capable of carrying me through content. Until I got some really nice stuff. So I stayed loyal for a while to the be that Beedrill. Yeah, yeah, having a multi-hit move wouldn't be bad in this game, so there's that reason. Probably replace the bell with that if we're gonna go that route with it. No. As I say, we could technically run around trying to force an encounter with a bee drill to get one to join. We really wanted to. Wow, I still haven't found the exit. I'm not roaming. I'm looking for the exit. I just haven't found it. Let's go ahead and burn an apple. Well. Yeah, we're fine. I wouldn't mind getting that bee drill, though. Come here. Come here. Just hold my breath like, maybe? Maybe? No, okay. Looks fine, looks fine. See? Looks right there. Everything's fine, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Jesus Christ, Bregwin. Hi, by the way. I see Team Skull has gotten to you, too. X. Even though it won't help him, whatever. And that way I make sure I hold on to the damn thing. Get used to it. Uh, huh. Okay. Left, up, or right? Someone pick. Oh god. So a friend of mine's friend once oh god, how do I properly describe this monstrosity? It was like Why do you wash your dishes? Just oh no 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 I wanted that ah! uh, why do you wash dishes? Just put them in the dishwasher. It's like, but do you clean your dishwasher? Because you know you have to. And the answer was no, the dishwasher clean it is it's a dishwasher. You don't have to clean the dishwasher. It's like what? And you know how dishwashers have that one specific thing to take out large residue? How clogged and bad do you think that was? Whatever you're thinking, it's not bad enough. That's a joke, but still, it, it was bad. It was bad. See, that's contrary to what I've been told, Alex. Which means I'm gonna have to murder somebody for lying to me. I hand wash too, but then again, I don't have a dishwasher, so... It's 
kind of by choice, or lack of choice, rather. Ten floors! I think this is our longest dungeon yet so far. Yeah, I kind of hope, and by kind of, I mean I absolutely hope to have a house someday. It's okay, I've, I've kind of let it go. No! 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 My Beedrill! Okay, hang on. Just for here. It, you're... Oh, wrong person. There we go. Die, Loke. No! Damn you! Damn you, Loke! Damn you! Uh... Pass, Ross. I give up on getting a beedrill. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hello? I... What? He's listed as an enemy. Yeah... I can't... Wait, what? Yeah, sure. I do not have 800 on me. So, no. So, I wasn't gonna steal anyways, but what happens if you do? Strongest in... Got it. Uh, let's see, questions. Um, oh, whoops. Hang on. Hang on. Well, Larian actually asked something I haven't really answered yet because I haven't come up with an answer yet. I have a lot of questions in the queue. Hang on a second. Damn, this is a lot of questions. I've already answered somebody, so I gotta clean this up manually. Give me a second here. Give me a minute. Okay, so favorite piece of D and D lore. I suppose it would be the politics of the deities. Was there ever a D&D &D campaign you wanted to be a story itself? Uh, yeah, I actually plan to do stuff with the Primus campaign someday. What's your favorite Pokemon battle theme? I can't think of any off the top of my head, to be completely honest with you, but I'd probably go with Pokemon Shield. I love the soundtrack in that game. Favorite video game dialogue you like to quote? Uh... I'm a 
not sure if I quote video games all that often, so I'm going to go with pass on that one. What's an older game that you would give the pixel remaster treatment? Uh, none. I don't particularly want remasters. I'm not interested in remasters. I'm interested in remakes or ports. Ah, hang on. Uh, how do you cook fried chicken? I don't. Assuming you had to clone a version yourself, would you sp both split the workload in order to get it done faster? No. Because, would this cause problems if you do? Yes, that would cause huge problems. Uh, I have a pretty decent memory, and slowly losing, like, effectively half of my memory would not be very conductive to proper interactions. Which of your interests do you feel would be most surprising from an outsider's perspective? Uh, my Little Pony, apparently, according to the internet. But other than that, I would say everything, because I am a bit of a little, little bit of a geek in almost everything. Probably the only thing that other people are weirded out by is the fact that I don't like anime. What's my favorite class to play in Dragon Quest III? I don't remember any of them. I'm sorry. Uh, Merchant, I suppose, would be my answer to that. Are there games from other companies from, uh, besides FromSoft that you consider similar in nature to Soulsborne game? Yes, quite a few. Uh, Hollow Knight is obviously a Souls-like. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order is obviously a Souls-like. Neo is a Souls-like. Would Zubat be your favorite? Would Would you like Zubat as much as you do if Crobat didn't exist? No. Would it be a favorite of yours? No. Favorite Pokemon in, ju in just in Gen One? I'm gonna go with either Aerodactyl or Beedrill. Or Zapdos. That's cheating, though. How much do you like Absol and Gal Galade? I don't even remember Absol. And I've only really gotten G Galade once. And I hate pronouncing it. I ever played a game so much that when the twist comes, one of your friends thinks it's one thing but the other? I don't actually understand the question, but I'm gonna go with no. If Pokemon were to go back to the old formula, do you think they should increase the, f the amount of double battles? Uh, no. I think they should increase the amount of triple battles and rotating battles and other fun battles that are fun and awesome and interesting. And we're now caught up in the queue. Our inventory is full. The irony is I'm, that's actually generally not true, Alex. I tend to be more in favor of gameplay than story almost across the board. There's a reason why I don't consider Final Fantasy Tactics to be that good of a game, to use a specific example. Maintains attack and special attack? Oh. Prevents them from being reduced. I mean, Final Fantasy Tactics has a good story. But... I haven't played that game without cheating uh, since the early aughts. I'm actually not looking forward to reviewing that game without cheating. Oh, that's not true. I didn't cheat on the PSP version. Because I couldn't. Never mind. I have not cheated... Semi-recently on the PSP version. I mean, that's true, but then you take Final Fantasy Tactics as a whole, which is what matters to me. If I wanted to enjoy Tactics Story, I could replay it in my head. Or cheat. Or watch a YouTube video. If I want... A, a, for a game to be good for me, actually good, it needs to be a game I enjoy replaying. Yeah, no, exactly, Ross. Three Houses has fantastic gameplay. 
in several respects. Let's just get rid of that one. Hmm. I should give that to you. Well, no. No, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, let's actually hold on to that. <laughs> you know, that's true, Mr. Red. Can't argue. Okay, let's get out of here. Not quite, Melkor. It'd be more accurate to say that story and gameplay combined is weighted more. Or, to phrase that differently, a game that has great gameplay and awful story is worse than a game... Oh, hang on, I'm saying this wrong. Ah, Jesus! Okay, we're out. We're out. I'm out! I'm out! Peace! Jesus Christ, hang on. Um, a game that has good story and, uh, a good story and gameplay is always going to rate higher than a game that has, you know, a disparity between the two. It's another reason to bring up Final Fantasy Tactics in particular. That game will probably score pretty well, but it will be carried by its story. God damn it, don't remind me of Fable. <laughs> don't remind me of Fable. Yeah, speaking of... You ever wonder why we call uh, one of the negatives we give out regularly audio spam? Well, Fable 1. Yeah, you, uh, you go die to that. Wow, this is, uh, this is getting bad, actually. I will agree that the job system in general will get a plus when we review FFT. And I'll be, as Takoda says, I, I didn't even realize this until I did, redid it for the low run. Yeah, the final act or so of FFT story is actually pretty crap. I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Alex. It's just, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics has a nice story, but that does not make Final Fantasy Tactics a good game. Like, nothing's actually changed that. Oh, thank God, we made it. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Everyone knows the good combos of classes and tactics. Probably because we all use the good combos in tactics. Like, even the more basic stuff, like, uh, what is it? Um, ninja movement, and then samurai block. And then, like, a knight, I think? And then you get du dual wield. I think that's the combo. I forget the exact specifics, but... It's some combination of being able to equip good swords from the knight, double dual wielding from something, and then blocking from the samurai. And then the movement. I think you could also do Dragoon with that as movement instead, but either way, you get the idea. Is it Monk? Oh, right, no, you're talking about another combo. Yeah, Monk Ninja is just... When we review FFT, I'm just gonna go straight Monk, because Monk is overpowered in that game. Honestly, in a way that's not really very well balanced. Oh, look, we found the perfect apples. Maybe. Alright then, how should we get the perfect apples? Easily done. What? 
Team Skull at your service. It's your Wimp it's Wimpy and Company. What took you so long? We've been having us a picnic of perfect apples while we waited for you to show. What took you so long? Yeah, I almost died like twice. It took so long I stuffed myself. So, uh, they're saying they ate the perfect apples, Runner, but there's still several left on the tree. Let's knock those creeps out. Knock us out? Well, that's very rude. Well, I was even going to offer my help for your mission. You were wondering how you could get perfect apples? Nothing could be easier. Watch. Well, it's no apple bucking, but, you know. Oh, perfect apples. See? What'd I tell you? Go on now, scoop them up. Skittle back to the guild. <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you going to pick them up? After all, so nice and helped you out. You're going to pull another dirty trick, aren't you? You can't fool me again. Tell me surprised. They didn't fall for it at all. Ah, oh, how boring is that? I was right. That's a little disappointing you didn't fall for our act. But so what? What are you going to do about it? The only thing we can. Kill you! Oh, okay. When we first met, you were shaking like a leaf. <laughs> it's true. That time I did back down. Even now, I'm a little scared. But I won't lose again. Persona! No, sorry. In, in honor of your courage, we'll take you on fair and square. Yeah, this should actually be kind of mean. Noxious gas combo. Do I at least get to fight them? No, of course I don't. Join me, Zubat. Join me! They left without me. No? Okay. Fine, whatever. What an overpowering stench. It's still lingering. What happened to the perfect apples? Yeah, they're gone. Those bullies eat them all? If they're all gone, there's nothing we can do. Sure. What? You failed? Are you serious? What am I gonna do? Seriously, what am I gonna do? There's nothing we could do. You see Skunk Tank and his... Quiet! I don't want to hear any excuses. You leave me no choice. For the time being, you'll go without dinner tonight. You failed to complete an important job. Your punishment could be much more severe. I don't want to hear anything from you. You've saddled me with this terrible task. I'm going to report to the Guildmaster now. If I have to face the Guildmaster's wrath by myself, that would be hardly fair. You two will come with me. That's an order. Probably not, Ross. Oh yeah, you brought me some perfect apples, didn't you? Thank you. Uh, it's awfully hard to say this, but... What's wrong? You see, the truth be told, they, they failed in their mission to bring back perfect apples. It's okay, I understand. It's alright. Nobody wins all the time. Don't feel blue, don't feel blue. Where are the other perfect apples? They failed to get them. So, the number of perfect apples harvested would be zero. Oh. Therefore, not even one perfect apple was obtained. You'll have to make do without perfect apples for a little bit.
Guildmaster. Guildmaster. The whole place is shaking. Over your ears. Why? Don't argue. Do it now. Sorry to disturb you. We've come to deliver a perfect apple. Oh, you assholes. Hey, you too. Quit dozing and show your respect and appreciation. I don't know what to call this, but I hate it. I've hated this since I was in school, because I've had people pull these tricks on me before. I usually beat the crap out of them. And got in trouble for it. I mean, yeah, it is bullying, but it's a specific brand of bullying. Like, it's this flavor of it that just makes me want to slug people. Uh, ignore what I just said in relation to what I said just prior to that. But Chief, I mean, Team Skull is worse than Getsis, I'd say. Because Getsis is a horrifically evil human being. But Team Skull are assholes. Chief, why'd you bother helping out that chicken? Like giving away that perfect apple. We should have just watched what happened to him. That would have been hilarious. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Oh, you're not thinking strategically. Why'd we come here in the foist place? The expedition, right? Right now, the trick is for us to win the trust of Wigglytuff. Oh, I get it. This being a famous guild and all, is playing it cautious at first, but it's been ridiculously easy. Wigglytuff's nothing more than a big baby. He's no big deal. Why is everyone so terrified of him? I don't know. I'm clueless. Anyway, find a treasure on the expedition. We knock out the guild's crew and snatch the treasure. Skunk Tank's team showed us up over and over again. It's great Wigglytuff didn't blow up on us, but we didn't get to eat dinner. Yep. Yep, that's... Yeah. Sleeping to avoid hunger. Hashtag relatable. Yeah, so I just need water and sunlight. I'm good. One last item. Tomorrow or the day after, or perhaps in several days' time, we plan to announce the members of the expedition party. By golly, the members are finally going to be picked. Oh my gosh, it'll be so fun. Hooray. I'm so hungry. Ah, you too. You should take care of listed jobs. About the expedition, you should give up on being chosen as members. Why? Your failure yesterday weighs heavily. As you know, it's difficult to tell what our guildmaster is thinking from his demeanor, but there's no doubt he must be seething with anger inside. It's unlikely he would bother choosing you for the expedition. So when it comes time to announce members, don't get your hopes up. That's all, bye! Oh, it's Bidoof. Hey, Bidoof.
Oh yeah, I need to be checking the diaries too. Yeah, that's that's my approach, Alex. It's like you know. Listen, Alex, I'm about to stab you right about the sternum. Uh, it's gonna hurt, and then I'm gonna twist it a little bit just to make sure, because I want you to scream uh, as you're dying. Uh, and then I'm gonna shove it up in your neck and just kind of leave it there for a minute. And I know that's kind of harsh, but it's okay. I'm being very honest with you about it, so I hope this is okay with you. Okay, so hold still here. <sighs> Let's see here. <clears throat> going on why'd you call us in here well here you go apples you must be very hungry we set aside a little bit of our dinners last night for you that's actually really heartwarming this is going to be one of those things where the actual villains of the game are our boss, but it's played for laughs because it's funny, isn't it? Like, I, I know that's a horrible way to explain that, and my, that was the worst sentence I've ever constructed. But you know what I mean? It's going to be one of those things, isn't it? There was an episode of My Little Pony I was covering. It is, uh, it's, it's one of the worst episodes in the entire show. And uh, going through the episode, um, they kept hoisting all of this work off onto Big Mac, who's a... I don't think he's actually a Clydesdale, but he's, he's a workhorse pony, right? He's a big, big sucker. And they just kept foisting more and more work on him and ruining his work and messing up, messing him up. And just, it, it was, it, it just kept playing it for laughs. And the more they did it, the less funny it got. And that's the exact same vibe I'm getting here. Is, isn't it funny how your boss is a middle manager who's terrible and awful and makes your life miserable? It's okay, your co-workers are cool. They're here for you. But your job and your life suck. Isn't that funny? Thank you, decent people, for the food. Because we were prevented from having food because we didn't do the job properly that we were incapable of doing properly thanks to sabotage! Yeah, exactly, Sierra Mike. I don't know, maybe I just lack the ability to look at things as a kid anymore. I can't imagine why. It's I'm only 40 now, but... <laughs> every one of us needs to be able to work hard to be picked for the expedition. Thanks, everyone. But he just told us we're probably not going to be chosen. How could you say that? There's no telling what might happen. No siree. Members haven't been picked yet. Thanks for trying to cheer us up, but doesn't everyone want to go on the expedition? What if we were chosen to... Yeah, did you notice they forced us to watch? While other people got to eat? I'm sorry, uh, this really needs to be emphasized. They restricted food from us. It wasn't that we didn't get paid that day, which what might make a degree of sense. No, they said no food for... I'm sorry, this is really pissing me off. And the more I think about it, the more layers of upset it's making me. Like, there's multiple directions of how messed up this is. Now, you might think, well, isn't that a good storytelling device, Lore? If it was doing it on purpose? Yeah, absolutely. If this was a story about the abusive parent, as Gum Gum says, or about, you know, us trying to get out from this terrible corporate job, I, I mean cult, I mean guild, then yeah. But no, the game's just playing it straight, because haha, isn't that funny? Now... If they ever retroactively change this, I will consider removing this negative. But this is 100% a negative. This is reinforcing some really messed up stuff. I'm trying to think how to even phrase this.
That's true. No, you know what? God damn it, Alex. You're right. This is worse than it was. We were getting... <laughs> the bullies reduced a specific food stock, which uh, the cult leader liked. And so we were sent on an unofficial mission to restore the stock of the cult leader's favorite food. You know, I think you're right, Savakam. And again, I think the main problem, I think that the big reason this is bothering me is because of how it's being constructed. Again, if this was, oh God, I can't believe we had to go without food. I know that's so horrible. I can't believe the chat talk wouldn't even listen to your side of the story. What happened anyways? Well, you see, unnecessary flashback because we have too many of those. Oh my gosh, you're right. Absolutely. That's horrible. We should try to talk to Chaton. And then we go talk to Chaton and he's like, No! You, no excuses. I won't listen to this. Maybe the guild isn't really for us. We should leave the guild. We could strike out on our own. Like, I could see that working. Obviously, from a gameplay perspective, it would be weird to lose, you know, the quest mission structure of the game. But you get my point, right? I'm trying to explain how purely narratively this could work. And it absolutely isn't. This is... If I was a cynical person, which I'm actually not, I'm an idealist, which is the problem, but if I was a cynical person, this feels like one of those things that's being done deliberately to get people used to exactly how much corporate life sucks and to just kind of have that mentality of just live with it, which is something I am very against. Uh, you know, the whole, oh, what, you have a problem with working a 70-hour work week because you know in a horrible job where you don't get overtime? Listen, you should just live with it, okay? You should be thankful you have a job at all. So just knuckle down. Don't look for a better job. Don't try to... Just, just, just... Everything's terrible and just live with it is an attitude that can go to hell. <laughs> yeah, sending kids to dinner without bed. Or sending kids... Wow, Laura. Sending kids to bed without dinner. It is a very Japanese attitude when you say it that way. Yeah, you know, you notice they started the plot and then they stopped the plot. Have you caught that? Like we had that quick thing. Boop. Here's the plot. Okay, now go, go adventure for a bit, which is a good. It's a good idea, actually. I actually gave it props for that because it's a good hook. It gets you right there in the in the immediacy. But now it's like, all right. Yeah, we're, we're not, the plot hasn't really kicked off yet. We're still in tutorial land or adventure land or whatever you want to call that. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm getting off topic. I'm sorry, what, Act? So I'm going to read that out loud for those of you who don't read chat. Apparently, if you fail sentry duty, not only do you not get food, Loudred, you, you know, your supervisor, the person working with you, also doesn't get food. Now, I agree with that, Sierra Mike. You, you know what I mean when I say the just live with it attitude. It's obviously life sucks and we have to move forward through things, you know, you, but you you get what I mean. You get what I mean. There's there's a there's a resignation in it. There's a resignation in the attitude that I I massively hate, because it it's the attitude of oh well I guess, you know my car broke down. I, the end, right? <laughs> As opposed to, oh my car broke down. Okay, now this is gonna suck for a bit, but I gotta put put up with that to get this situation fixed, right? Like, I, I know what I, I know how to push through the thorns. I know how to push through the muck. You get what I'm saying. Anyways, so
there. Sorry, that's way off topic there, but negative to story. Jesus Christ. Let's just codify that nonsense. Uh, so. If you don't get picked for the expedition, you should cheer for those who did. Uh, we actually started yesterday, Skywolf Dragon. Yep, yep, and everyone wants to go on the expedition with you, Loke and Runner. Yeah, I gotta be 100% honest. If I had... If I, this wasn't the show, if I just I would have just planned this on my D DS, there's a good chance I would have put the game down right here. That... That says all I think it needs to. And that's a shame, because I bet there's going to be some good stuff after this, but I would have just been like, nope! <laughs> just all kinds of nope after that nonsense. You know what? Actually, I actually agree with Alex, because that was not just terrible, that is game-quittingly bad. And it's so early in the game, relatively speaking. I actually agree with Alex. I'm gonna give a second negative for this. I apologize, but I'm I'm going to. It this is this is bad for so many. So there's so many layers and so many different ways this is bad, and this has been bugging me. Hang on, I'm I'm just gonna give that second negative and say screw it. There we go. That's better. Now that being said, I am actually going to go ahead and give an additional story positive here. And it's it's for what it was already mentioning. Uh, it's what we already mentioned. <laughs> Something that would make me quit the game over it, that's pretty bad. And I suppose there is the possibility of overthought. But I'm always going to fight back against that because there's also the possibility, or I should just say the reality of underthought. They didn't think about it. And that's where we're at. Because that's the thing. Like I said, I, I'm not cynical, and I don't think this is being done on purpose. I think the, the creators of this game literally didn't think about it. I think it never even occurred to them what they were doing here. Underthought, in other words. It's the Star Trek problem. Star Trek usually isn't Star Trek didn't deliberately make the Federation a horrifically fascist nightmare state. They just didn't think about it. Right? But that's still a negative. Exactly, Alex. If it's on purpose, it's an atrocity. If it's on accident, it's incompetence. There is a difference between those two things, but that's where we're at. I think I'm actually going to codify a few things, too, here. Let's, uh, let's hang on. Let's, let's grab a save state. That's, that's true, Lord Haramont. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Uh, so hang on. Because I haven't codified any of the gameplay positive. I've been debating several of these things. Oh, it's really easy, Sub-Zero. All you do is not think about the kind of story stuff you're making. There's a plot point in an episode of Voyager about the fact that... So, this this is what I mean by not thinking about it. Hang on. Hang on. Let's... let's give me a sec. Give me a sec. Remind me to come back to the Voyager thing. I'm going to change song so we have a better song to listen to. Let's go talk to Krogonk really quick. Hang on. What are you up to with Badoof and the others? It looks so sneaky. I guess it's got nothing to do with me, but... <laughs> anyway, that's not why I called you here. Waiting's over. It's all about my shop. The Krogunk Swap Shop is back in business. You heard right. Finally finished repairing my swap cauldron, which means I'm finally back in business again. You should put certain kinds of items in here in this swap cauldron. 
And those get swapped for an item offered up by another Pokemon. Don't, don't we already have a thing that does this? Okay, whatever. So we're going to talk to all sorts of people and all sorts of stuff and all sorts of things, but I can all wait a minute. I, I need to change songs really quick here. Just, just give me a sec. There's a cutscene, but we're going to ignore the cutscene. So, Voyager. There's an episode of Voyager in which they have to prove that someone's being mind-controlled, okay? Or mentally influenced. I actually forget what it is, but it doesn't matter. Now, they have lots of ways of doing that. The writers do. They can talk about how they're acting out of character, or maybe they're, they've been a little bit unusual, or someone noticed something that otherwise wouldn't be noticed about them. But instead, the writers decided to go with the shortest path from point A to point B, which is they the Voyager crew happened to be constantly doing regular scans of everyone's brain patterns. Which they have sufficient knowledge and technology to then interpret people's thoughts, perspectives, and personalities. Now, this is what I mean by underthought. This is exactly, that's why I'm using this exact example. Because the writer wasn't thinking about what that means. The writer wasn't thinking about the implications of the fact that the ship is constantly scanning everyone's brains. It was just, oh, look, this is a way to prove that they're being mind-controlled. Oh, no, we've got the proof now, and then we go deal with it, right? And it was just a throwaway thing, too. But that's underthought, in a nutshell, right there. <laughs> I mean, see, again, and yeah, that's the point, Von Falkenstein. There could be logic behind that. That could be a part of the setting. It could be a type of... Con it, it, there could be a concept where you could develop that and say that that's a thing that you accept when you join Starfleet, and some people might not be accepting it, and some people might be accepting of it, and maybe it becomes an issue or whatever. But again, none of that's true because nobody thought about it. It was underthought. Does this make sense? This is the kind of, this is why I say that some people, you know, the Federation is not this horribly fascist state. But if you look at certain specific points, and I'm not going to go through the list, but if you look at certain specific points that writers who underthought put into episodes for their specific things, then the Federation turns out to be this, oh my god, this is horrible, kind of a thing. And yeah, it's fridge horror. It's, you weren't supposed to think about it because they didn't think about it. But when you do, it's like, oh, oh. And that is, again, exactly what just happened here. That's why I use this exact perspective. Because they weren't thinking about what it means to have, you know, this kind of abusive work environment or to have this kind of cult-style approach. They were just like, eh, da, 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 trope and da, 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 workflow. Okay, let's go, right? And again, the distinction is if they did it on purpose and did something with it, that would work for me. Just like over in the Federation. Okay, maybe I wouldn't be okay with the Federation being fascist, but you get my point, right? Again, with the brain scanning thing. If that's a detail, if that's a world-building point, awesome, do something with that. Ro run with that, right? Imagine Neelix joining the crew and being like, you scan the brains of everyone on the ship on a regular basis? And have, like, one of the crew members just be like, yeah, it's so because it's so normal to them, right? You know, have, have Lieutenant Paris just be like, oh, of course... Why, why wouldn't they? And Neil's like, don't you feel that's a little bit odd to have your brain constantly monitored? Well, it's it's there for us. It's there for our protection. And, you know, have, have it be a dialogue. Have Do something with it, right? Instead, it's just a throwaway line to solve one stupid plot point. Anyways, I'm sorry. Getting way off topic here. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to have some stuff to discuss in a Pokemon mystery dungeon. This is actually kind of cool. I'm with it. But anyways, there's someone at the cafe entrance. <laughs> Is that in the rewrite? You know what? It hasn't been. But I'm going to write that down because I have regular meetings with Mr. Reloaded about plot points and ideas. And I'm going to jot down brain scanning. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, it is effectively the freedom versus security argument. Let's go over here. Uh, here we go. We've already invented Replimatter. Yep, that's a thing. We've already redesigned how Dilithium works. I've got a bunch of notes here. It's really cool. We've already redesigned the Gorn. They're the Dutch now. 
We need to decide which city is wiped out in World War III. Anybody have any suggestions? Probably somewhere in Eastern Europe, I'm thinking. I don't know. Okay, so brain scanning as a regular thing. More feds. Talking point, question mark. There we go. Kansas City! Let's do Nobody cares if you wipe out Kansas City. I mean, I'd care. Because I would be laughing the entire time, but you know. Las Vegas. See, it has to be a city in which the Eastern Coalition from World War III are attacking actively while uh, other stuff's happening. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily limits it, but it does kind of limit it. Because wherever it is, there's going to be a nice big... Uh, we actually did the math, and by we, I mean K, uh, Kira White Noise did the math. There's going to be a nice big, like, 70-kilometer radius, excuse me, so 140-kilometer diameter uh, area of death when this hits during World War III. I was actually thinking Prague, as much as I hate to pick on Prague. But, I don't know, I, we, we need to decide on a city, and that's, that's the sucky part. Because no matter what we pick, someone's going to be like, hey... No, I, I'm good, Act. I'm good. Washington, D.C. Uh, that would be a... De uh, that's a decent chunk of New York and Pennsylvania right there. That would be gone. Hmm. I don't know. We, we can figure it out later. I do need to decide... We need to decide on that city at some point, though. For a little bit of context, during World War III in the Trek rewrite, this city is 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 essentially nuked, but in the process, this is actually the wake up call that allows people to pull back, and you know stop destroying the planet. You know, tens of millions of people die in this horrific attack and this horrific accident, and it's like, oh my god, and this is going to be the tipping point, right? That that's the idea. This is the tipping point for people to start not being horrible and to effectively cancel World War Three. Bucharest. That was an interesting idea. Anyways, seems like there's some wonderful news for all the explorers at the cafe. I wonder what kind of wonderful news. Oh, nobody's gonna live, loner. This is, it's actually not a nuke. It's an impact from a, I believe it's a six kilometer wide meteor. So... The math has already been done. Nobody's gonna live through that. This is gonna crater this area. Yeah, this place is just going to get... I say nuked. Glassed is probably more accurate. There's go It's not just going to hit a city. It's going to hit a city's region, right? Like, it's... it's it, There's going to be... Like I said, there's going to be a, literally a crater here. And it's something we need to decide as well because that crater is still going to be there in uh, Modern Trek, right? So in Modern Trek's era, that crater will be preserved as like a monument, as, as a historical site of, this is where World War III ended. So. Now I'm really interested. I'm going to go find out. I'm going too. Wonderful news, huh? We should go too. I agree. What do we got? What's going on? What's going on? May I have everyone's attention, please? First of all, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. <laughs> Today, I would like to give you some wonderful news of hopes and dreams. Ahem. Thanks to your kind patronage, this cafe has been quite popular. We've been fortunate to have so many wonderful customers. This shop's pride and joy, the Recycle Shop, is fully operational and has collected many items. We'd like to thank you for your kind patronage by opening a new service. We're calling it Project P. Sydney? Oh, that would be mean. We're running the Wiggly Cuff Cult. What's that? This project aims to use items gathered at the Reich Cycle Shop in order to explore unexplored places. Let me explain. 
Right now at the recycle shop, you trade in items in exchange for a shop's items. Thanks to everyone's continued recycling efforts, we've gathered a lot of items at the shop. The service will continue to operate in the same manner, and now with Project P established... You might be wondering how Project P fits into all this. We'll use the accumulated items to explore unexplored areas. Geneva. Or Zurich. Oh god. There's still so many places around the world that are waiting to be found and explored. So many secret treasures and challenging puzzles waiting to be discovered. So let's go out and find them. Ah, the pursuit of knowledge and continuing exploration. Speaking of the Federation. We'll find dazzling treasures, probably. If you bring your discoveries back to the cafe, you'll get a special deal at the recycle shop. Interesting. You know, honestly, Saurian, let's do it. I'm Spinda is already better than Wigglytuff in every way. And the Why Not duo back there, what, Why Not and Wobbuffet, they're better than ch uh, the, the frickin' bird I can't pronounce. So... Don't you think a magnificent project full of hopes and dreams? I've been told not to do the special episodes until post-game, so no, Torchinator. We've already sent an exploration team out to unexplored areas. There should be new discoveries before long. Let's all work together and find unexplored areas. Oh, that's amazing. They're actually contributing to the world around them instead of detracting from it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is a blind playthrough. I've never even heard of this game until it was added to the list, so this is pretty new to me. Uh, what if there's something special if you recycle a lot? I really don't get it, but it sounds great. Yes. Yeah, so there's another series called the Pokemon Ranger series, which I have heard of. Um, I am so misinformed that I thought this was Pokemon Rangers. Not that it was called Pokemon Rangers, like, like that the gameplay and, and the structure of Pokemon Rangers was this. I was wrong. As long as they're paying. Alright, I'm gonna recycle a bunch from here on out. Yeah, I know exactly what it's like to go hungry. When you recycle, you can trade up for even more amazing items. I'm not being deceived, right? This is okay? It's okay, I, it's it's alright. Wigglytuff can't hurt you. You know what's really sad? Wigglytuff is actually a pretty high-tier Pokemon. In, in the meta. You can turn a Wigglytuff into a death machine. If you know what you're doing. Like, Wigglytuff is a heavy. So, it's it's even more messed up if you think about it, that the Wigglytuff is the leader of the guild. Because a Wigglytuff is high tier. Not super high tier. You know, probably like A tier. But still. <sighs> yeah, I think there's a few Pokemon Ranger games. I'm, I'm not sure, obviously, because I was mistaken on which games were even named what, but whatever. Alright, so hang on. So how... Oh, dude, there's three! There you go. I'm just saying, if you add one to the list, we could totally play it. Cough, cough. It's, it's on the DS, I'm pretty sure, because, you know... I love this Pachirisu here. How many of you noticed the Pachirisu on my shelf back there? It's really small, it's like this big, so I wouldn't blame you if you know. Got it, don't add Ranger 1. Which one's Ranger 1? Which one was the ranger game where you have to go, uh... Oh, excuse me. Um, like, the plot concerns team bad vibes or something like that. And they're, um... They're trying to make a, the, the bad machine that, like, controls the Pokemon around them. Okay, that's Ranger 2. Cycling is a trend of the time. Raise eyebrow. Oh. Circles. Which one was Rangers Three then? Because I think I've heard of Rangers Three. I apparently haven't heard of Rangers One. 
I mean, it's okay. We have a stylus. Check it out. Here's here's my mouse. It's just like this. This is me on the mouse right now. Hmm. Okay, so we actually skipped a bunch of stuff earlier. I guess we should go do this really quick. Oh, we got a money. Not so great. We could probably afford one 800 thing right now. I've heard Wiggly Tough's guild's going on an expedition soon. Good luck with that. I hope you get picked. And I hope I don't. Yo! I'm advertising another shop today. Oh yeah, we forgot to do the binding thing. Yeah, Electrifier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, don't spoil for me. Don't spoil Skywolf Dragon. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know. But if someone wants to add Rangers... Two or three to the list. I'm just saying. Thing. So it tastes costs 500 to do a link, and that costs tons of mana. But I'm guessing that's a good boss cracker. Hmm. I mean, we could just do like. Well, no, that's stupid. What could we? What could we combine? We could combine Charge and Spark. Hang on. Hmm. We don't have anything really worth linking right now anyways. I mean, we can do Tackle Quick Attack. I'm not going to do Charge Spark. I mean, I guess we can do Charge Spark. What's it actually working? Uh, uh, uh. Do the next turn. Uh, actually, never mind. We could do that. Hmm. But we don't have the money right now, and we're not really boss hunting yet. We'll get there. We'll get there. You know, admittedly ditto a little bit, Ross. Although I haven't seen that episode in a long time. The expedition's coming up quickly. It would be nice to see you two chosen as members, too. Oh? As for us? It goes amongst, about saying we'll be among the chosen. What'd you take us for? How very insulting of you. But... Uh... Would you like to do the Kirby right back at you? What the heck is Kirby right back at ya? I've never even heard of that. Speaking of which, Luko asks, what Final Fantasy class would I be? Everyone in chat, what Final Fantasy class would I be? Remember, the you in your head is not what anybody else sees you as. So it's always interesting to hear what other people have to say about you. Even if it's usually... A little, uh, detrimental to the old morale. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, that's the car that's the cartoon which made uh, Meta Knight into a Spanish guy, right? Either way, I'd probably veto that. Calculator. Wow. I like most of the answers I'm hearing. White Mage, Paladin, Warrior. Yeah, I could do that. Not sure if I'd be a good Black Mage. Reaper. I mean, yeah, Alex. Healing people... Ignoring the fact that healing someone is actually incredibly overpowered from an in-lore perspective... Of course I would want to be able to heal someone in real life. Duh. You know? Like just... You know how I was sick last night? week? <laughs> no, I'm not. Like, even if I was had to be very careful about it, could only use it on certain people who are also in the know. Think about how extraordinarily useful that would be. 
What if there's an accident? What if my niece gets hit by a car? Done. Sold. Heal when you could nuke? I feel like I literally just answered that question. I'm not about to lose. I like that Bidoof. Weirdly. It's weird, Act. They probably made Bidoof a good character just to make up for the fact that it's a Bidoof. I let chat vote for it, Sub-Zero. It's a good question, Pika. I haven't read it. Or read it. I haven't played it, so I have no idea. Oh, wow. Spit on Wigglytuff. Ugh. Well, that sucks, Alex. That's not even a remake at that point. That's just a remaster. eating. I didn't realize that after you took jobs on the bulletin board and outlaw notice board to actually do them, you needed to take job in your job list. I didn't know that, so I went to the dungeons without first activating jobs with the take job command. By golly. I wonder I could never do my job since I got to a dungeon. I finally understand why Chatot's always so upset with me. Yeah, it's because he's a middle manager. A typical middle manager who needs to be taken out back and shot. I don't care if that's that that's too dark. Screw him. Sunflora is some kind of awesome. Yep, yep. I went exploring with Sunflora the other day. It turns out Sunflora is a real expert at fighting in dungeons. When her enemy's just out of reach, she doesn't move for it. She uses A and launch a regular attack, striking at nothing. And then the enemy close, spends that turn closing the distance to her. And then on her next turn, she's the first one close enough to hit. No, no, no. Not the Wigglytuff, Savicom. The Chatot. The Chatot's the problem here. Maybe. The, the Wigglytuff might be the problem, but the Chatot is definitely the problem. That's true, Trihexia. Everyone, take Trihexia back out, back, and shoot him. Or stab, I guess, is our thing. So stab instead. See, there's nothing I was clueless about. When you use moves instead of regular attacks to defeat him, you get more exploits. I knew that. <laughs> I mean, Wigglytuff might be to blame, but Chatot is definitely to blame. One way or the other.
Something sure was a surprise the other day. I was checking the outlaw notice board and I suddenly stank like rotten sulfur. Everyone turned to look at me like I had something to do with it, by golly. I swear I had nothing to do with that awful stink. I know I've been guilty in the past. Like that time in my room once. And twice in the mess hall. And once in the guildmaster's quarters. But! By golly, I'm not guilty of anything this time, I swear. Guild's going on an expedition soon. It'll be my first expedition. I sure got my heart racing, by golly. But will they think about choosing me? Compared to everyone else, I'm slow and klutzy. Even Team Horizons rookies are getting better and better. I'm sure they're not giving up, by golly. I'll do the best I can and get picked for the expedition. Yep, yep. There was sort of a scene today. Team Horizon members were denied dinner tonight. They went to bed hungry. Why are you reminding me of this? I reckon they goofed up something bad. No! No, we didn't. That's the problem. Still, going without dinner is a rotten thing. I know I surely can't last a night without a full belly. So I decided I'd save a bit for my dinner so I could share it with them. Turns out everyone had the same idea. We all saved a bit of our dinners, it seems. So we all t met up that night and we talked it over. Yep, yep. We decided to share our food with Team Horizon. We'll, rec we'll sneak them food tomorrow morning after the morning briefing. The older apprentices are usually really strict, but it turns out they're awfully nice at heart. This is making me all emotional, by golly. Yeah, me too! It's one of the better scenes of the game so far. Which is just bizarre, considering what it followed, but you know, whatever. So meanwhile, Sunflora... Sunflora's Oh My Gosh Diary. Tomorrow I'll be exploring with Bidoof. Uh, Bidoof sure is, is sure to wander needlessly, so I should stock up lots of food. What do we need food? Oh, it's a tutorial. It's a tutorial. Tutorial, tutorial. P.S. I plan to write about how my exploration went. Oh my gosh, someone's peeking at my diary. How horrifying. Do you like, like middle managers? If I count myself, I have encountered two decent middle managers in my life. That's probably all I need to say about that. I had a nasty scare the other day. While exploring, I was careless and took a hit from a fire type move. Yeah. Yep, types are a thing. Yep, yep, I, I know what types are. I have played Pokemon before. Thank you for sharing this. This is good to have this in the game. Oh, I need to apologize to Loudred. Sorry, Loudred. Okay. Yeah. Something very mysterious happened in our guild the other day. We were in the guild when, oh my gosh, the place was stuck up with an atrocious stench. Oh my gosh. I've never experienced such a foul cloud of fumes. It was an eek-worthy moment. But everyone denied responsibility for it. But there's no fooling me. I know what I smell. There was no mistaking it. How mysteriously it crept up on us. Who is the culprit? In the morning briefing, Chatot told us something that's worth a good scream. Eek! There's an expedition coming up. I know, right, Sunkum? Oh my gosh. It's been since only ages since our last one. In our last expedition, we brought home simply massive amounts of treasures. We shared everything with everyone in Treasure Town. It was a happy, happy time. Ooh, the upcoming expedition should be fun. I wonder what we'll explore this time. My roommate, Chim Chimicho, and I got all excited guessing about the destination. Of course, I'm doing everything I can to be picked for the expedition. Well, I'm feeling motivated. Yippee! So I don't have the energy to be that positive right now. My bad. Like, oh my gosh! Something happened that was totally uplifting. Tonight, Team Horizon had to go without dinner for some silly reason. While we were eating? Oh my gosh. Badoof was leaving part of his dinner untouched. And this is Badoof, right? The one we call the bottomless barrel because of his big appetite? Whatever could have caused that? Maybe he's heartbroken. Well, I guess that at first. But then I figured out what he was really doing. He was leaving some of his dinner for runner's team. Then, oh my gosh, the others noticed too. So we all did what Bidoof was doing. We left bits and pieces of our dinner. Although Loudred agonized over the decision to the end. Everyone pitched in to help. 
How sweet of them. In the end, we decided to share smaller things and leave them with one whole apple each. Chim Chim Chimicho, Bidoof, and I will keep those apples for the night. Tomorrow morning, we'll give them to Team Horizon. They must be hungry now, but they have to endure just a little longer. We'll stick together. We'll make it into the expedition party. Yeah, Team Bidoof, seriously. <laughs> So, okay, why am I so harsh about middle managers in general? The middle managers of a corporation have the worst job. Uh, this is a structural problem more than anything else because the middle manager's job is to implement policy, not decide policy. And the middle manager's job is to take crap from the employees without being able to do anything about it. So that sucks. Here's the problem, though. There's lots of issues with how much power they have and how much influence they have and what they could be doing without doing it while simultaneously taking a lot of blame without being able to deal with it. So most middle managers are people who are, by kind of the nature of the job, scum. Because they are people who are, by just natural selection, have, are, are good at avoiding blame and constantly foisting things onto other people without dealing with it. If this makes any kind of sense. <laughs> so they've, the middle manager position has the short end of the stick, and I do feel bad for that. But a lot of the people who tend to get into those jobs and pursue that as a career are people who have actively gone out of their way to, yeah, to be a jerk, essentially. Someone who actually thrives with that kind of positioning. So it's kind of a catch-22. There's no real winning there. Well, that depends on the individual at that point, Magister. Hmm. So we've got two in the beach cave and one in the bluff. What do we got over here? Or one in the beach cave and two in the bluff. In other words, three each, no matter what. And yeah, this goes back to something we talked about in um, Final Fantasy XIV, specifically. Oh, hi, Death Eagle, sorry. Uh, in FF14, you remember how I mentioned how the Garleans are... The, uh, the Garlemald Empire was a despair engine that was never designed to work. It was always designed to screw everyone over as much as possible. One of the reasons I brought that up was... I mean, there's a lot of reasons I brought that up. But one of the reasons was because that was... Uh, that was an organization that, because of its structure, because of its mechanism, would get scumbags, would get assholes, would get people who like and enjoy stepping on other people, who would try to seek out positions of local power in order to try and be able to you know, be horrible people. Right? And that's why we had so many horrific people in the provincial areas. It was because they wanted that, they sought out that, and the system supported that. So you can see why it's kind of a, a you know, there are there are scummy middle managers, and middle management is scummy. It, it, both are problems here. Now, you might think, well, how do you fix that? That's a much more complex problem. It's the lieutenant's problem, as it was once told to me. Which is a military joke, which I'm not going to explain in full totality, but the idea is how you need to have someone in the middle. That is a necessary component. But in general, it's much easier to just let the crap roll onto the person in the middle, which is what we just talked about, rather than to try and make a setup in which that person in the middle is being properly supported from both ends, which is what they need, because they have a crappy job. Right? And I was going to say, Maverick, and I know Sierra Mike was there too, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about with the lieutenant problem. <laughs> I need to really empty my inventory. Let's, uh, let's, let's make some stuff here. I actually enjoyed being a manager, admittedly, but then again... I, w I would probably be a really crappy middle manager. I was a middle manager, but I was also a middle manager who completely ignored my general manager and just did whatever the hell I wanted to. 
worked out quite well for me. That's also true, Hazardous. I agree with that. That's a problem in general. People tend to allow you to push the envelope to the breaking point before you step in. I have that problem, too. I've done that before. And I need to not do that as often as I do. Hang on. Let's just dump it here. Yeah, let's get rid of all of that crap. Just, just all of that crap. Ah, don't pay him any mind, Act. There's only one reviewer you should pay attention to. Please. Please, I need the validation. <laughs> I need someone to care! Um. <clears throat> oh, screw IGN. IGN has never been a good review service. Never. They have been a joke for decades. I am actually having fun overall. There are some irritations, which I'm not going to lie about. You know, I, I'm never going to pull back from that. I'm never going to you know, be uh, an Aris Kisser. But overall, this is a pretty net positive game so far. I'm with it. If I had to stop streaming and go back to work... I mean, so I was a network engineer. That was my primary thing. I actually started off as a c incredibly generic IT, which is as incredibly generic as it gets. Um, but I kind of drifted into network just by virtue of getting jobs like that. And that's how that's how that works. You start this is actually legitimate advice if anybody out there cares. You can get into IT and then get a job in IT, try to specialize in something or show interest in something, right? And you'll kind of drift further and further into that. And eventually you won't be an IT person, you'll be a hardware person or you'll be a uh, a code maintenance person, or it'd be a virtual server person, or whatever, right? So, pick something that interests you once you're into IT and, and focus on it, and then that you'll become a network engineer, like I did. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, I've, I've actually already given it... So, someone uh, asked, I think it was Skywolf Dragon asked, what are my negatives? So, obviously, the scene we just had can go to hell. Gameplay wise, I do think um, I think the dungeons have a little bit of too much of a tunnel problem, the one tile uh, connected corridor thing, because if the dungeons were more open, the gameplay would be a lot better supported. In fact, most of the, the, the fun I've been having in the combat is when I pull back or fight someone in one of the open areas because then positioning matters. And, you know, you can actually set up where you are versus them. You can maybe pull back because, you know, they have a two-round two thing, etc., etc., right? But when you're in a corridor, your options are attack or turn around, and that's kind of it. And so that's kind of a problem. And the early game hell can honestly go to hell, no pun intended, because there's some pretty bad uh, early game hell in this one. I, I mean, ignoring the fact that I died six times to the third dungeon of the game... I do feel legitimately underpowered at this point. It's one of the reasons why I keep uh, going to low-level stuff until I feel like I'm a little bit more uh, codified in my setup here. Like, I'm doing the Beach Cave, for God's sakes, you know. But I imagine at some point that will no longer be true, and I've got some ideas. I, I keep burning gummies on my main character and leveling, and I have, I have a leveling spot. I'm just not doing it on camera. Uh, we'll send back Alex for this. And yeah, it's doubly funny because this game actually does have a party. Which I know sounds strange to, to comment on, but that's a good thing for a Pokemon game, like I said. Because it opens up tactical possibilities in a game like Pokemon. So yes, come, come with me, Doduo. Where are we going? We're going... Down to four, that's not too bad. And we're just gonna beeline it because nothing in here is worth our time, really. Uh, we were grinding, and then everyone in chat told me to stop grinding. I will grind a little bit earlier. 
Uh, did I say earlier? I meant later. Yes, get out of here. I'll do it off camera, don't worry. I was gonna say, Dragon Age Origins is another excellent example of early game hell. Um, yep. Especially on hard difficulties, speaking of someone who's actually done that. Uh, and for those of you wondering, though, one of the reasons these kind of games tend to have early game hells is because these games tend to be built around the idea of having lots of options. Kit is what I call that. You know, having lots of abilities to use lots of different Pokemon, lots of different moves, lots of different items. You know, in Dragon Age Origins, you have all the spells and combos and tactics and equipment and stat-ups and all that fun stuff. And when you don't have that, the game just kind of sucks more. Because you don't have it, right? Like, I feel like that is self-explanatory. Don't kill my Duduo, please. Uh. That's true, Blade Travel, although I tend to Korean method more often than not nowadays. Okay, okay, hang on. Stop being injured. See, stop running. It's an escort, Lord Haramon. Whoops, ah, whatever. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I figured I'd be fine since I was in the beach cave, and you notice that we still almost lost it to Duo. A yellow gummy. Nice. Money. Delicious money. <laughs> Crusader Kings 3, Trihexia. Ooh, a blue gummy. Oh, wait, no, I don't care about blue gummy. I care about pink and whatever grass is, which I think is green. Silver rank. Ooh. Oh, can we eat dinner tonight? I'm not letting that go. They... <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Overseer USA. As always. It's a grass gummy. And I'm jotting that down for, as previously mentioned, Crusader Kings 3. Which is getting pretty funded if you look at the list, which is updated as of last night. Ugh. I'm gonna kill you, Loudred. I just want you to know that. Yeah, dinner that we pay for with 90% of our taxes. Sound design? I could I could posit that. Alright, what do you got for me today? Sentry duty! I'm not big on denying people food, but admittedly, I'm not sure what other options they have later of all. Paying for room and board with 90% of my income. Yeah, no, that sounds accurate to real life. Just in case. Uh, isn't that CDOT? Uh, you can kind of rhyme. There's a few more different rules that apply there, but 
for future streaminations, the answer is yes. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Yep, yeah, okay. No? Is that a Charmander? Okay. You can tell I know Charmanders. Or rather, don't at all. I don't know what you're talking about, Savicom. Your pure insanity. That Charizard, I guess. Weird. But no, I just dumped a bunch of dealer's choice on it. Uh, that looks like... Yeah, Riolu. <clears throat> now, you haven't done any trading, Savakon. If only you knew someone named Valerian was willing to trade with you. Alas, it is truly impossible. Uh, that looks like Torchic to me. Yep. No? That has to be Chimchar, then. Isn't that Venusaur? Okay. Congratulations. You get food today. Riolo is a uh, popularity Pokemon. It gains power from being more popular than other Pokemon. Four hundred gold, which we only get forty of. Pecha scarf, that is, and a reviver seed, which is always nice. Wait, do we get to eat dinner, too? My goodness. This is astonishing. I admit the idea of a species that can eat nothing but berries is actually kind of fascinating to me. Like a sentient sapient species. Yeah, Bulbasaur looks pretty big and dumb. Just like me. Okay, do generic jobs. Got it. I mean, we do plan to do post-game, so we'll see. I actually did notice that, Alex, because it struck me as weird since both coughing and Zubat do. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that used to drive me batty, Savakarn, is people would constantly talk about my dimples. That's a good question. Why is coughing evil? It's because they're poison and associated with Team Rocket, but, I mean, come on. Uh, what do we got? We got a bunch of Mount Bristle, which sounds mean. Uh, what do we got? So that's a uh, search escort in Mount Bristle. No. Hang on. 
So we got those two for the bluff. That's probably true, Act. Which is funny, because purple is my third favorite color. Technically. Good afternoon, exclamation mark. Today I am streaming Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, period. Actually, the full title is much longer than that, comma. You know how it is, period. Yeah, yeah, that's on floor... Actually, that's on floor nine. God damn. Yeah, we're, we are super not doing that. We also get a black gummy. I don't think we've even had a black gummy yet. Fourth favorite color? I've never thought about it. Really deep blue, I think. Like violet blue. Team Frontier. Interesting. That's a good question, Gum Gum. Paracross are pretty legit. It's actually one of the only bug types I like. I usually don't care for bug types. Oh, I don't have anything on me. Let's go fix that. Yeah, Royal Caps Lock mode. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Do you think she caps locked whenever she talked online? Because, I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, I saw the Spinda job, but that's in, uh, hell, and I'm not doing that. Mauve, Alex. Anyways, the problem is it would depend, Gum Gum. Like, if a colony within the Empire goes full rebel rebellion, then, like, what the hell happened to allow it to get to that point, you know? Like, by the time a rebellion is declared, a whole lot of things have gone wrong. Nope, I was gonna sell that. Uh... Well, time to kill Alex, then. Again. God, all I do is kill Alex. It's ridiculous. Don't even get me started about Rebels in EU4, my god. It's like, alright, we've decided to give you all the things you want. Like, ah, Rebellion. We want to put this other asshole on the throne who'll cause our organization to fall apart in like five years. Okay. That's a good question, exclamation mark. I haven't decided yet, period. I'll let you decide, exclamation mark. What should I have for lunch, question mark.
Well, yeah, of course it is. It's an economic game act. Like it or not, that's always been the state's thing. I have... I, I believe you, Alex, but I have literally never heard it pronounced that way in my life. So I don't believe you, and you're lying to me. So now I gotta kill you. Again. Oh my god. Alright. Although if you're calling it Mauve, then that's even worse. So I stand by my statement regardless. That's a new one. So we've got Mauve, Mauve, and Mauve. Great. You can also add Mauve in there if you want to add that. Or Mauve. Just really throw it up in the air. Colors this so it's very mauve. Ex See, Lex has got it. Hey, Polka Sweater. I was just thinking about how mauve this game is. We disagree on several things, actually, Ross, but as far as core Trek principles, eh, it's kind of hit or miss. I will admit, for several of my ideas, I've had to essentially fight him for. And vice versa. Like, he's really in favor of the Species of the Week concept. Whereas I am not. Not Threat of the Week, Species of the Week. You know, just, just a species you see once, and that's it. Oh, that sounds good, period. I shall order some immediately, exclamation mark. So Lord Mom is telling me I need to get tacos. He's the one who wanted the cross species to be a thing. And thus, we came up with the compromise. I can't do fish in general. And I've also never liked fish tacos. That's always been her thing. I could get tacos tomorrow. Or I could get tacos today and have tacos tomorrow. Worst Obsidian game? Um, I don't know, I'd have to look at the list really quick. I also haven't reviewed most of them, so that would be just off the top of my head. Wait, 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 wait. Too far. Uh, let's see here. Well, as I was gonna say, so there's Neverwinter Nights 2, which I still enjoy despite its issues. There's uh, Alpha Protocol, which I haven't played in years. Um, Kotor 2, which falls apart hard in several ways. Oh, yeah, you know what? Pillars of Eternity 1. There's my answer. This is my least favorite Obsidian game, Tales of Eternity 1. That game had problems up and down. Gotor 1 is not Obsidian.
Let's see here. Well, there's a place nearby here which is literally called the Tacos. So sure, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Yeah, PoE 1 has world building, and that's honestly kind of it. The main plot is not all that engaging. Most of the characters are not really something I even consider to be memorable. Voice acting is intermittent. The gameplay sucks almost top to bottom. Yeah, PoE 2 improved over the formula in every way. Better characterization, more voice acting, better quest design, uh, far more engaging plot. And the game was actually fun to play. By the way, one of the questions I get fairly regularly, because I recommend Pillars of Eternity 2 a lot, so, one of the questions I get is, do I need to play 1 to enjoy 2? No. 2 literally begins by spoiling 1, but also summarizing 1. I highly recommend you skip 1 and just play 2. And yeah, I was going to say, Divinity Original Sin is another perfect example of that. Do you need to play DOS 1 to enjoy DOS 2? No. The two games have almost nothing like each other. Yeah, compared to Black and White. Uh, okay. Well, so far I'm liking the world building this. It's probably one of the better aspects of the story other than the characters of this one, I'd say. We just got Self-Curer, so we'll look at that in a second. Hang on. What did we just get? Recovers faster from status problems. And also... We'll occasionally use a move without using mana. Not quite what I was going for, but you know what? I'm with it. I have played Path of Exile. I did not like it. Just wasn't my thing. And meanwhile, Magister says, Did I play Path of Exile? I mean... <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got that, we got that. Let's go ahead and do this. Yes, for no reason. It's been super smooth so far, no issues. Although I have a pretty good setup. Yeah, I was actually thinking about comparing this game to black and white, but that's not quite fair. Because, I don't know, black and white has a cup, has, most of black and white's issues are from our artifact issues. You know, stuff that's been an issue with that series since the beginning. St you know, old stuff, right? Like the HMs or the mechanisms of how the interface works or all that fun stuff, right? Yeah, exactly, Ross. By contrast... You know, something like Pokemon Sword and Shield is a much smoother game to play with much worse content. And I feel like there's something similar going on with this game right here. Let's get Barbacoa Tacos. That sounds good. I mean, so far I would tend to agree, Torchinator. I haven't had any... Like, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I haven't had any content issues with the gameplay so far. Uh, let's see here. What should I get? What should I get? What are street tacos?
Sorry, give me just a sec. I just want to get this order in before I cut off for lunch. It's not going to get here until, like, the end of my lunch break anyways, right? Oh, that took so long. Okay. I was say, at some point, the plot's probably going to start kicking in. Although, if you think about it, we're like nine hours into the game at this point. Don't worry. Like I said, I do actually plan to grind a little bit off camera. Oh, I forgot to bring my fourth person. Yeah, whatever. Really tempted to go try to pick up a bee drill, but eh. what am I doing here? Finding a seed. It reminds me of 358 over 2 so far, which is admittedly not a compliment. Anybody who's played uh, Kingdom Hearts 358, oh my god, over two, you know what I'm talking about. Like, there's plot missions, and those happen, like, once every five, in some cases, ten generic missions. And if that sounds familiar, then that's exactly what's happening here. Yeah, you're also in a cult there, you're right. Wow, that's, that's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You need to hit day X, and that's when the plot progresses, and you get to time to advance by doing missions. There you are. Die, Gloom. Oh, no. Oh, that might actually be bad. Okay. Okay, so let's do this first. Most of these are low level, but there's a lot of these. Admittedly, no, Torchinator. It didn't occur to me off the top of my head. Okay, so... Abilities? Hey, there we go. That's probably worthless at this point. Um... Screw it. Well, that's terribly bad. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Oh, 
Well, I also lost a turn to a literal input error, so that's always fun. What? What happened? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, I cringed. Okay, I was gonna say, what? This game, I'm not dealing with recoil. Not have any throwables anymore. Well, I have a stun seed. I don't think that does anything against that. Yeah, this is just me slowly dying here at this point. What? What? Uh, uh, okay. That's not what was supposed to happen there. That's two turns I lost to whatever. Yeah, I didn't complete a mission, but it's okay, I get dinner this time. Well, what happened was I was holding down Y to figure out when it was my turn. And just kind of idly, you know, pressing on the D-pad so that it would show up. Like, it works. Yep, yep, yep. Another generic day, got it. And then it was like, oh, you want to move up or left? All right, here you go. And then it did. I was like, oh. Okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, Ross. You know that's true, Saurian.
Actually, you know what? Hmm. I think we'll go ahead and chop off here, now that I'm thinking about it. So I'll be back in about an hour-ish. Hopefully my food will arrive by then. 